What up, stream? Welcome to this Saturday gaming stream where we're going to play Space Station Zero, Snarling Badger Studios' newest game. We have the one, the only, Vince Venturella, or Vince TV, lovingly coined by Ninjan over here. And also, Adam Smasher, Uncle Adam himself of Tabletop Minions fame. Uh, you guys, take it away. What is this game? How do we play? All right, you want me to go? Sure. Okay. Space Station, Space Station Zero is a sci-fi miniatures agnostic, agnostic survival skirmish, skirmish game. game. Uh, so, so it has solo co-op co as, well as well as head-to-head -head -head mode. Today we're going to play a co-op co mission. Uh, and, and the game, game itself is, is all about exploring the hidden depths, depths of a dangerous and ancient and forgotten space, space station and uncover the mysteries in it. If you can, you can survive, survive. Uh, because you're stranded there. Because you're stranded there. So you don't really have any other choice. Yeah. It's either die of alcoholism from the stuff that you've been making in your ship or try to figure out what's going on. That is, those, those are your only two options. options. That's, That's it. it. There, there is, is no, no third, third option. option. We have an important question. Yeah. Are there attendees available in Space Station Zero? Um, I would have attendees, to yes. yes. Chicken, no. We have attendee shaped things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Okay. Wherever, wherever cultures, cultures go, go, no matter, no matter where, where they are from, from in the universe, they break food, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. There will always be tendies, but mm. chicken, maybe not so much. Yeah. So, uh, today, today we are going to, you guys are going to be our, our players here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you through a little bit and help you all play since uh, they've never played it before. Uh, but it's real easy to get going and get started, as referenced, as referenced by the fact, fact that, that I didn't bother prep them, them at all, all with basically any, any of the rules. rules. Yeah. Uh, I, was I was just like, don't worry about it, it's fine. You get yeah. it, it's yeah. cool. And, and uh, yeah, so, so we're, we're going to take, take it through cross. This is actually going to be challenge, challenge number four, four which is, is uh, that's, that's because challenge, challenge number one is on, on a bat rep on my channel, channel, and I didn't want to just have them replay the same challenge. That would be kind of not great. Um, because of the nature of the branching challenges in the game, you don't, you may or may not, as you explore the space station, actually even go into challenge four. Uh, so you never, it's not like you follow them in order. There's a, there's a choices you make will determine your path. Through the numbered, the numbered challenges. Mm -hmm. so some challenges mm -hmm. end with a random roll mm -hmm. to see, see where you go next, next, and some challenges end with a choice that you're given and say you can go this way or that way. And that you do your own adventure. No, no not, not that. that. Oh, not that. that. <laughs> they're they're very litigious. It's not that. Very choose codes. Very That is a branching narrative adventure. That's what he said. Yes. So. In this particular little challenge here today, this is the fabrication bay. And our two uh, spaceship crews, uh, one of which John will be piloting over here. Uh, that one is a brave crew of space pirates. Uh, so, or maybe not so brave, but they've decided to team up with a very harmonious and religious culture uh, of explorers. Um, both of you have found yourself trapped here. And this bay has three uh, massive fabricators in it, the three standing, standing pillar thingies. thingies. Yep, yep, exactly. exactly. Uh, which, which may come into play. play. Uh, the, the room is full of toxic gas, gas which, which can, can be vented, vented out, out if you're good, good enough and you get, get over to that vent, vent on the far side, side of the board. And, and there, there are also, unfortunately, swarm drones. drones. They, they may look like, like fat, gross people, but in fact, they're just masses of tiny robots. So it's like a... Correct. Oh, my. Exactly. Uh, so, so the, the challenge, challenge for you is, is to uh, survive everything and uh, uh, defeat all, all of the enemies. enemies. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, um, a, note a note on, on just give a quick note on difficulty curve. curve. We'll, we'll, we'll take, take a minute. minute if people, people have, have questions. questions. Shout out to people who have been gifting subs. Pain really get. Thank you for this sub. You said I don't know. I said I know I don't need a ship for the crew. But I have a ship for the crew, you know, that That's extra fine. bit of... We actually mentioned that in the book, whereas the question is, do I need a ship for the crew? And yeah. then, like, if you want to make one, that's cool, but yeah, yeah it's not a necessity. Yeah. Also, a pain to get not only donated 100 bits, but also gifted six subs. Woo! So nice. if you got a sub from pain to get, make sure to thank him in one of the one of the chats. And we're having some audio issues right now. Don't worry, Evan is Working on the on case. It. He is furiously trying to figure it out. He sees your your chat. Someone mentioned, are we not reading chat? It's difficult to read chat when you have two handsome men like this here. Wow. Uh, so we will be trying to, uh, and definitely be shouting out subs and stuff like that. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Vince, can you come over here for just one second? Vince, Vince can, can come, come over, over here for one, one second. second. Yes. Vince, Vince will be right back. back. I, yeah, have so. to, I have to wrap him in, Vince. From, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, Vince that's okay. So yeah, have you any questions about Space Station Zero? Let us know now, and we will uh, try to answer them in this brief little intermission period. How do you feel about this game right now? I'm pretty excited. Uh, right before we started, 
Scott was like, hey, can we make some kind of a truce on how we're going to play the game? And then he remembered it's a cooperative game Oof. and that we weren't going to fight each other to the death. Although, Adam, am I right in that we could choose to do that? <laughs> I mean, be, the, the idea that it's co-op means that you're not going to do that. Okay. Right. Sorry. I okay. Should... Like, I just like if one of his little religious zealots gets a lot, a lot of hand. So our last game... Because they were all demons, you could easily just like oh, if no, no. you just uh, a guy on your own team, yeah, like just be like that guy's about to croak, and if those guys get him, then they get the points. But if I eat him first, then I get the points. And, but that's not the way this works. Okay, all, all right. right. So war. War. look, our best chance of survival is that we work together. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. okay. We love to beat up on each other, but yeah. We'll, we'll collab this time. Uh, okay. Evil Eric DM, thank you for the five gifted subs. We really appreciate that. And also Painterly Gate, thank you for gifting yet another sub to Zambi. Someone said, uh, can I get a pachow? Do you pachow for money? I, I, I no. Okay. I mean, a pachow, there you go. There I'm it is. Throwing, I'm throwing them out. I'm throwing them out. I Someone saw, said, I saw, I saw some, some questions. questions. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do, do this to check, check my sound, sound working. Okay, okay. Apparently, apparently I was, I was a bad, bad robot. robot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not that you're a bad robot. It's that because we've got two new labs, I'm getting some crosstalk and I'm still working. Gotcha. Sorting everything out. Right, gotcha. Duplicate a bunch of stuff. Unfortunately, didn't have enough time to set up our new audio engine. It's going to help a lot with this stuff. Yeah. But uh, such is the nature of the game, so to speak. All right. All right. The, the echo, echo return. return. Okay. okay. Great. Yeah, it's right now when Vince and John talk, it's it's real bad. So, uh, All right. we're getting there. Well, then, then, then I'll, I'll, I'll touch, touch for a moment and let you guys, you guys talk. talk. Yeah, so someone asked, what miniatures would you guys personally recommend for the game? And it's a mini agnostic game, and mm -hmm. so I think the beauty of that is that you can use your favorite sci-fi miniatures, right? Yeah, and exactly. That's, that's really it. The whole concept is that it, it's designed to give you the ability to either use miniatures you already have. Like here on the board, we've got Space Marines, we've got uh, Inquisitor Greyfax, we've got some House to Lock, we've got is that Cawdor? Cawdor, yep. Infinity. Um, yeah, exactly. And so you can use whatever you want. Like That's the whole concept. On the other hand, you can also be like, I've always wanted to 3D print this guy and figure it out, and but I don't have a game to play, but I think he's really cool. Well, now you've got a game to play with that. Or, you know, some company that's kind of like small that does like resin stuff that they ship, or again, STLs, like all that kind of stuff. Any kind of, uh, you know, sci-fi model that you've been interested in getting and using and, and having in a game, that's the whole idea of miniature agnostic. Okay, wonderful. Um, yeah, let us know any more questions you might have. Um, I know we shouldn't talk about production things during the stream, Evan, but I have two other omnidirectional mics. Do you want to go to a, we'll be right back and sub those mm -hmm. mics in for these ones? Um, Sorry, not omnidirectional, but two other lav mics. That's an option. Let us know if you want to do that. Any questions from your chat, Vince? Um, yeah. yeah, someone's yeah. asking, uh, is there a faction that feels like a Star Trek crew? I've been looking for an excuse to buy Star Trek miniatures. No. So, explorers, so that there's not so much factions in the game as it is that you showed up here on this space station and you came on a ship. You're either on a warship or a medical ship or a science ship or a shipping ship or a exploration <laughs> ship or a... Party ship? Pirates. Pirate ship. Oh, no party ship. It's kind of like a pirate ship, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it depends on what kind of pirates you are, really, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so if you wanted to play with explorers, that would basically be, like, if you look at the art in the book for that on that page when it shows the explorers, those two people have got a bit of a, almost a, maybe a next generation kind of sort of, you know, whatever those kind of tops are and stuff like yeah, that, but then that lots is. of pouches and cool stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's definitely something you could use, uh, for sure. And I think Modiphius has made a Star Trek board game, so maybe you could even RPG? get some. RPG? No, there is a, yeah, there is there is a minis, Modiphius, I, I think, has got a board game. Yeah, yeah so yeah. you could pick them up and use them for this game if you All wanted right, we'll to. see if I'm still echoing. Do I sound okay? I'll talk for a minute. I'll, I'll say, say it's just going to be really quiet right now. Okay, that's fine. This. I'll, I'll, I'll be really quiet and say, say your, your crew is actually the Super Star Trek crew, as a matter of fact. Because, because you also have an edge of harmonious culture, culture meaning right. like, but if you think of how the Star Trek crew works, right, it's all about exploration, and, right? And they're, yeah, they're explorers, but they're, they're also incredibly in sync. sync. Like how oh, they don't they fight with like, each other. The, the, the crew, crew itself are very, very harmonious. harmonious. Like they're, they're well trained, trained. they're officers, officers. they get along, get along extremely well. well. There's, There's the scene where the people, yeah, people get along with Kirk. 
Well, well, I mean, well, yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. absolutely. Like, like Bones, Bones and Kirk and, Kirk and, 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 are, and, and Spock are all like, yes, the tightest of friends. Yeah. yeah. There's, There's a, a great, great episode in TNG, TNG where, where literally just Picard, Picard is giving nonverbal signals to everybody and they trap a bunch of aliens, aliens that have shapeshifted onto their, their, their bridge, bridge that has better technology. Yeah. Gotcha. And he's and like, like, that's, that's how in sync with my crew I am. Okay. Okay. I so mine are even more in sync. Yes. Okay. They are quite literally in sync, yes. Which one's Justin? Uh, probably, probably that one. Sure, sure. Okay. I think. Um, but yeah, but yeah you, you have, have not, not only the ship, ship you came in on, on uh, to, to as a faction, but then you also get to choose an edge. So harmonious culture. What's the edge that uh, John's running? Nano machines. Nano -machines. So, so when, when you, you do that, that the you've got customization. Like there's not a ton of customization in like the number of of models that you have in your in your game. You've got either a commander and four crew, a commander and six crew, or a commander and eight crew. That's it. It depends on, like, the stats on the eight crew guys are a lot kind of weaker than on the four crew guys. The four crew, that's like a, a more robust, more um, elite kind of group, whereas the eight, they're a little bit more rookie. Mm. Um, but then, you know, once you've made that choice and you choose your ship and then you choose your edge, and you kind of choose your commander to some degree, and that gives you the customization. And then as you play along in the campaign, you're also then able to put skills and stuff and whatnot into these different people who aren't dead. Uh, some of them will die, and that's just the way that it's going to work. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, it's designed to be played as a, a, a campaign game, but there's also rules in here. If you two did want to play against each other, there's also rules for that and six different missions to play skirmish. Okay. Adversarial is all right. Well, let's get started then. Um, let's let's start rolling dice and moving minis around. Vince, what do we do? I think I might be still echoing. Am I no, still you're good. good. I'm good now. Okay. Yep. Yay. Okay. okay everybody, everybody, tell me if I still sound okay. okay. I really hope so because I need to talk like a lot. <laughs> so it's going to be real bad if that's still the case. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, okay. Good. I should say it's getting better. Echo a bit. Okay. Uh, All these people don't know what uh, comb filtering is. All right. And have never had four people on lav mics sitting less than six feet apart. Yeah, yeah that's okay. okay. They can just hear what they can hear. Right? He's working on it. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. Cool. Vince, you go in the other room and tell us the rules. Now do this. Okay. Uh, all right. So, you guys ready to begin? Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. All right. I'll watch, watch the chat. The chat. Uh, okay, good. Somebody said it's fine now. Awesome. Yay. All right. All right. Here's, Here's how we begin. begin. Uh, uh, in Space, Space Station Zero, Zero, the players always get the first activation every turn. Why? Because. When you're playing solo and co-op. Correct. Correct. When you're playing solo and co-op. Uh, so it just makes life easier. We don't have to worry about it. We'll talk about how you retain initiative and stuff like that as the game goes on. But for right, right now, between, between your, your two crews, you two each get to pick one person, not, not both of you. You got to talk, figure out who you want to activate. What you know is that that vent way on the other side of the board will shuts off the toxic gas that's going to potentially hurt you every time you activate. And you know that these guys are going to be highly, highly resistant to your weapons. Um, all of you, except for one guy in this group, which is that little ace pilot right there, is armed with kinetic weaponry, i.e. bullets. And bullets don't kill masses of tiny robots very well. Uh, so, you can manufacture special guns in the fabricators. That's an intelligence thing. It's a reaction thing to shut down the vent. So your people who are good at reaction will be good at that. And your bad guys are bad guys. And it may surprise you to learn that combat would be the uh, important part of that one. Yeah. yeah. So the mm -hmm. question we have to answer for ourselves, John, is do we do the classic movie mistake of splitting up right now and each going to our own event? Or do we stick together? Maybe one person goes for the fabricator, one person goes for the vent, but we're staying as a as a cohesive unit. So he's going to have to travel farther to get to us. Well, well I think my leader's got a, a jump pack. Oh, maybe. It's eight inches. I think the goal will be maybe like his turn two or something. Hopefully, that goes zoop and then zoop. Okay. I don't, I don't know how good he is at like cranking big turn dials to turn it off, but I can get there quickest with that. Okay. So, I, I mean, we could all scoot this way, 
make our energy weapons here and then I work over there and then we worry about this pack and that one hopefully is slower to get to us. Okay. Yeah, yeah I love that idea. So when we activate, do we activate all of our dudes first or is it back and forth? Monsters, back dudes. Back and forth. I'll show you how it goes. You pick one guy and that one guy gets to activate. No matter how many players there are, you activate one fig at a time. So maybe, not, maybe not the captain goes first, but who's the tankiest dude in our lists? Uh, your, your commander, commander is, actually is actually quite tough. tough. So, Mr. Green Flame Boy is your commander there because he has he has yeah. armor. He's the, actually, actually the only person with like full like, heavy armor, armor that's going to be useful in this scenario. You have the, the tough sort of commander. Um, um, although uh, your, your leader, leader and your soldier are both pretty tough. Okay. So, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm my oh. leader to go lead the charge here. Be the chump activation, activation in the beginning. Yeah. 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 Uh, alternatively, this guy, my ace pilot, has the energy weapon. So he can damage them? He can damage them. Oh, okay. yes. Everybody can damage them. It's just, it's just they're not going to be very effective. Very, it was not very effective. <laughs> uh, can he shoot and move, or can he only do one? Yeah, once you, once you pick a guy, I'll tell you how your turn goes. Uh, let's, let's, let's roll some bats and kill people. Yeah, I mean, if he's, he's the one that will be able to do more damage, and he can hit them, I might as well let's do it. just have him go. All right, so I'm going to have him move first. He moved four inches. All right. Bup, 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 oh, well, bup, I just bup, want to play the game. Go, go, go. Whoa, whoa. Oh, unfortunately, in oh. this challenge, as I said, the room is full of toxic gas. Oh, no. Oh, no, indeed. Oh, yes. Uh, so <laughs> oh. we got to watch that. The Kool-Aid man will bust right through the door. <laughs> there was um, quite a large blank space I said, right I said, there. I said, yeah. Yes, so it's better. <laughs> if, yeah. Say the other one. Well, um, so you need to roll to see if you are affected by the toxic gas. Uh, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it said, they they said uh, I'm sure you're on it, Evan. They said yeah, the, I know. Okay, cool. Good, good. I know you're working it. Uh, so when you activate, uh, you have to make a life save because the room is full of gas. So every stat you have can either be a save or a test. Sure. Uh, so your life on your ace pilot because you're the toughest crew is six. So you'll grab a six dice, and this is where we get to the basic rule of the game. Right. which is the rule of evens. When you, you roll your dice, evens are successful and odds are not. So just get good at looking and separating your two piles of dice. So it's odds not, failures. not about rolling high necessarily yeah. in this situation. It's about rolling evens versus odds. Correct. Yeah. And the toxic gas in this room is a life save two, meaning you need to roll your six dice and get at least two successes. Okay. Odds, 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 odds. Two evens. We're good. You good. It'd be good Ooh. if you uh, rolled in the dice yeah. spots, by the way. Oh, 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 there's a, <laughs> there's a camera for that. Yeah, there is. yeah. There is. Trust me, I'm not doctoring the dice at all over here, Evan. <laughs> you also leaned out of your shot, which We're is good. good. We're good. All okay. right, so he is safe to uh, proceed so, to move, right? Correct. All right. I, I'm taking you a little slower through the first one just so you all get the basic concept of the thing. Uh, so he got at least two successes, meaning he reduces the damage to zero. So your move on your ace pilot is four. In your turn, you can move and then take some kind of action, which could be interacting with any of the various things on the board, or it could be making an attack if you have a weapon that works at range, or it could just be to move again. Um, oh, so you always start with a move, and then you do an action. Okay. Okay, correct. So your move is four. That just means four inches. It's pretty easy. And as I said, everything can be challenge tested. This scenario doesn't happen to have it. But there are some where, for example, there are like uh, parts of the floor are rotted away, and so you make movement challenge tests as you walk and stuff like that. So Everything Do I know what the ranges of my weapons so I don't move four inches but still not in range? They are everything. The range is the board. Right. Okay. I got I got sweet. As bullets. long as it is not a close weapon, which it is not, like okay. which means swords and stuff. It's just guns just shoot the range of this. These bays aren't big enough to be beyond gun range. Okay. I will just move him four inches up to there. Uh, I want to go check out this sweet garage. Mm. Maybe they may have a tire iron or something I could use. Um, and then I'm, uh, I'm going to shoot these. And this guy right here. Okay, so here's where we reference your combat number. <laughs> now, your ace pilot has a base combat of four, but four. he has a heavy energy weapon, which adds three to his combat number. Ooh. It is a big gun. Okay. Uh, and he also has had his weapon tuned. And so his, because he got tuned up by the engineer beforehand, so you actually have a combat score of eight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He whoa. is a very dangerous fellow, your ace pilot. Ace pilots, by the way, are a veteran troop type. Um, you both happen to be playing crews that can have that veteran crew type, but veteran crew types are highly restricted to the individual crews, and you can never have more than one of any veteran crew member. Oh, okay. Like, there's a regular pilot, and then there's the ace pilot. There's Red 4, and then there's Luke Red Skywalker, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or Wedge Antilles, or whoever your preferred ace pilot is. 
Uh, so you're gonna roll those eight dice, looking, shooting at that dude. Looking for evens. I right, you assume you're shooting at the nearest guy. Uh, yeah, nearest guy. Yep. Okay. Yep, roll them in the box. And uh, do I know what my target is? You're just rolling for evens. Okay. It's just evens. Those are successful. The rule of evens. And they they modulate. That was a pretty good roll. Uh, they modulate success by having more dice. It's like the better you are, the more dice you get to roll, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. And what was twelves? Are if you get multiple twelves. So two or more twelves or two or more ones. I need to know because I can't see your dice. Yeah, two got... more ones and two or more twelves. Awesome! Two That's ones, amazing. Two twelves. Super Ooh. helpful for teaching. Thank oh. you for doing that during the first <laughs> roll of the game. So two ones is a critical failure, which would mean you automatically miss and resolve no damage. However, two twelves is a critical success, which means not only do you hit, but you resolve double damage. Uh, and if you happen to get both in the same roll, as can become quite likely when you increase the number of dice on a high skill character like this, mm -hmm. the crit success trumps the crit failure, and in fact, it retains and becomes a crit success. Woo! So, uh, effectively, what happens here is, how many actual successes do you have? Four. Four, okay, so that becomes, normally that would just be four damage. Your number of damage you do is equal to the number of successes you have. Okay. But because it's a crit, it doubles Heck and becomes yes. eight. So you blast this guy for eight damage. Now you have to roll his defense, because I'm not the GM. I'm not rolling your dice for you. You're playing this game. So the way that you do that is the monster rolls its own combat score against you, okay? You okay. To defend need itself. A GM. You just, yeah. Yeah. Just I'm, players do that and stuff. Right? You, you, all, there's AI in here that tells the, the enemies what to do and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, the swarm drones have a combat of five. So there you go. You're rolling five dice. Every even is a successful defense. That one's cocked. Oh, God damn it, John. Four successes. Okay, your eight damage gets reduced down to four damage. Okay. Basically, every success removes a point of damage. It's that easy. It's okay. Simple enough. So, swarm drones have a life of seven. So oh. that means there is three life left on that guy. So if you want to put a little one of your little die markers next to him. And is, hey, is this is this uh, hit points remaining or damage dealt? How do However you, do you like to do it. Please. Remaining is the correct answer. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I say too. However you like to do it, but remaining is the correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you like. Yes, okay. okay. I, mean, I could have one shot at him. Uh, thanks for the sub, Buck Slack Thirty. We appreciate it. Uh, okay, I'm just I'm trying to watch the chat at the same time. I'm taking people through this. Um, yes, Stephen, absolutely it does. Uh, cool. Uh, so you've damaged that guy. You did your thing. Your turn is complete. Okay. Now, you guys, as the active players right now, roll to retain initiative. So one of you, whoever you want. Can you roll. roll. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not good at this. One, you need a, one die. One you need die. a six, six plus the first time to retain initiative. I got a three. Uh, so oh. retain initiative. You fail, which means it passes to the enemies. Okay? Oh, no. So now the enemies activate. Uh, and the way that the enemies activate is the enemy who's... Uh, the, the, these guys use a pretty basic AI because they're just kind of dumb swarm robots. So the closest enemy to one of your guys activates, which just eyeballing it, it's going to be the guy who's near your ace pilot on the corner you just shot. Yep. Let's say it is. Uh, and they, these guys do not have a ranged weapon. They have little claw weapons. Okay. And he has a move of four, which is probably not going to bring him to within an inch, but you can measure that out to see. And this, we'll assume this guy is the closest. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure. So he moves four. Very good. That did not bring him within an inch. So then he will spend his, uh, since he only has a close weapon, he will spend the rest of his other action continuing to move and come up and engage you and okay. come within an inch. Would, would they stop as soon as they hit the within an inch or they go base to base? Uh, they, they'll go up to within an inch. Yes, okay. Okay. Within an inch. Mm -hmm. Cool. And the, the bad guy has now acted. He couldn't attack because he was outside of range. You guys have, at early on, you know, the monsters, these guys aren't super fast, so you don't have incredible threat from them. Now the bad guys roll to retain initiative, which they're doing on a six-up. Who would like to see if the monsters get to keep going? I am, because Scott didn't do his job. <laughs> Deuce, baby! <laughs> okay. Well, the monsters also fail, so it passes back to you guys. Back to your activation. Who would you like to activate next? All right, Scott. Maybe, maybe, you, do you want to... Bring somebody up in here, or do you want me, my soldier, to see if he can go punch a size? Can the guy who already activated activate again? No, you can never activate a person more than oh, once you, per, oh, per turn. All right, you, you were talking about your ace pile. You meant the guy, with the the guy with the big fist. So, right there. Yeah, the guy with the melee weapon. What are the odds? That your soldier has a melee weapon. Does he does he kill that guy if he goes, or what do you think? What are the odds here? How many dice are you rolling? What's your what's your combat? His 
combat is 5-8. I'm guessing the 8 is in melee. 8 is in melee. Oh, yeah. Go up and rock that guy. Uh, so he he's dice to roll? He might die. In his movement is only 4 inches, though. So let's see if I can get within an inch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Engagement range is very simple. It's an inch, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So if you can... If you can get to within an inch of something, you, it, it can engage you, and you can engage it, and you move into what's called close range, which has consequences, as we're about to see. Now, this guy is a close combat specialist. Like, this dude is meant to rock people in close combat. I didn't I didn't roll for my poison. You didn't. You need to make your life safe, because you activated. Uh, L of six. Mm-hmm. I got one, two, three successes. You're good. You're good. Okay. Your crew is generally sort of elite enough that this kind of thing isn't as Beefy tough Beefy boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colorful Soldiers is asking, what are the monsters? They are a collection of tiny robots that look humanoid in profile. And they come <laughs> together. Yeah. It's like, uh, what's... asking what the models are. Big Hero 6? Fox Walkers. Big <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what? Big, big Hero 6. Yeah, the, yeah, little, yeah. the little bots yeah. come together to mm-hmm. make one big thing. Yeah. Nanobots. Yes, they're there nano machines. Okay, so uh, the soldier moves. Yes. You can now attack the dude. I I punch the nano machines. Mm-hmm. So again, your dude is armed with a uh, he is armed with a heavy melee weapon. So uh, swing away. The nano machine. Basically, he's got like a chain sword or or a giant yeah. sword or something His like that. His hand turns into a giant tennis racket. I'm fine with that. And he swats them. You explain it however you like. Okay. All right, we're looking for evens. They got one, two, three, four. No ones, no twelve. Oh, he could die if he doesn't roll a great save. Yes, so you got four successes, correct? So we need okay. two saves to live. One gets one, he's dead. Well, he's got some extra little things going on we're about to learn. Oh. You're about to see how their defenses work. Five, five uh-huh. is there? You had four successes, right? Yep. Yes. Roll it out. Got one, two successes there. Okay. So you had four damage on. He reduces it by two, okay? Ah, uh, but just hold on a minute. Oh, no. If the swarm drone is damaged by a weapon without uh, the energy type, which is everybody except the ace pilot in this entire game right now, uh, they suffer, uh, they reduce uh, the damage suffered by the attack by one to a minimum of zero. So they actually only take one damage. Okay, so we're learning. And you know what's kind of awesome about this experience where you're telling us that as we discover it, it's like this is how it would be in real life, right? Oh, sure. It's yeah. like, oh, you just blasted him with a gun. I'm going to hit him with my, my, my tennis racket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like, well, that was way less effective. What's going on here, right? Okay, okay. So, so now I know. Actually, one thing I want to state is at some points in the book, we want that we wanted that discovery to happen. Yeah. So there are challenges that have both information that's set to the side and out of the way, and it mm-hmm. says, like, don't read this until a certain point. Like at the back of the book, yeah. yeah. And then there's, yes, there's like where it'll be on, like, turn the page now, and then you look and you're like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. But there's also stuff that's completely hidden away in the back of the book that you don't read until you reach that point. Mm -hmm. And that can be like a real surprising thing that happens during a challenge or some mystery you learn. So you you can't flip and be like, wait, hold on, that's what's going on? You don't know, it's it's all hidden in the back. Wonderful, wonderful. I was just going to ask that question, and you answered it before I got to ask it. There you go. As the challenges go on and and they escalate, um, more things become hidden. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you are choosing your adventure, but then the adventure chooses for you. We're not doing that. <laughs> okay. Um, no, we get to try to uh, keep the initiative. You are correct. Let me answer a few. Let me touch pause here, here real quick to answer a few questions. Are all the scenarios played on a 30 by 22 table? That's the standard default game size. There's no reason you couldn't alter the game board to be yeah. like three by three or something like that. But two by three or yeah. yeah, whatever you want, really. Three by two. Now, sure. <laughs> some of the uh, some of the maps shrink the available space. That is to say, sometimes you're in tighter quarters, uh, so there will be like no go zones like on you're the in board. A corridor yeah, like you'd be in a corridor or something like that. But that's as long as you just take a look at it, you can easily eyeball it. Yes. Uh, and then, hello, Ben Firth. There you go. I noticed you. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, uh, Zerkas, thanks for the sub. We appreciate it. Okay. Uh, cool. All right. So you guys went, which means you're now trying to retain again. I'm guessing it gets harder the more you retain because Correct. it's harder to just keep going, keep going. That's right. So I'm still looking for a six up. Yes. That's yeah. a six, sir. You, you guys have another activation. You may continue Scott, activating your people. Hell, can I play the video game, please? 
I rolled you, one die so far. Well, that's <laughs> as much as I can rely on you. He's your big brother just holding the controller. Yeah, like, <laughs> could be in a dick. Just give me the, the unplugged controller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I will, I'll, I'll, I'll say the course here with the tanky strategy and put my, my big scary guy forward first. So I can move and do a thing. That's another yep. movement. That's an attack. That is that's interaction. Kind of interaction. With, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll move forward. Uh, what's his move? Your leader's move, if that's what you're talking about, is move five. Okay. Now up. Remember, you're activating toxic gas. You got to make your life save. All right. I believe your leader's life is six. six He's yeah. pretty tough. All right. Got it. And I need full of life. I'm going to take two damage, but I need two saves otherwise. Yeah. All right. Looking for evens here. I got a, oh, a single even. So I took one point of damage. Take one mm -hmm. point of damage. All right. Pink Nose Kitty asks, will there, will there be copies of Space Station Zero available for purchase at Nova? Yes. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming shipping works how we think it'll work. Yes. yes. Then yes. Yeah. Okay. How do I denote damage on my characters? Okay. So you normally on the, on, the, die? Yes, on the printed out character sheet, there's a space to track life. For now, just put a die next to him. And that's fine. Yeah. All right. We'll keep that there and I'll move him five inches forward. Can I move through my own dudes? You can. You can move through your own people. All right. You can't yes. move through enemies. I think what we'll do is we'll kind of just stay by the rest of my team. Um, just, you know, power and numbers. Um, five points left. Okay, so I can shoot. I can interact with something. I'm probably not near anything to interact with. Maybe I'll move again. Would I have to do another save if I move again? Nope. No. It's just when you activate, once per activation. you either breathe or didn't. Okay. Do you have any advice? Should I move again or should I do something else? What kind of gun have you got? Um, I have... He has a basic sidearm. A okay. sidearm, yep. Okay. Basic kinetic range. I mean, the, the overall, the you, you, you lost a point on this guy just from the toxic gas. As it goes on, you're gonna wanna probably get that toxic gas out because otherwise it's gonna start to just chew on your people and then start taking away life, just, you know, attrition. So trying to get over there to kind of make sure that that thing gets turned off is probably not a bad idea. And that's this vent right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I'll but do then it. Then who's got, uh, wait, that's an intelligence, right? Uh, reaction to reaction. Shut, it's in reaction to shut down the vent. Intelligence to manufacture. Reactions guns. four on that leader. So oh, there you go. Look at you being oh, smart. You okay. And so, do you think he's a good person to be doing this mission, going and getting uh, that vent turned off, or no? Or should he be should he be going and getting weapons out of the vent? Uh, of your guys, he's probably the highest in reaction. No, uh, your ace pilot's got a five, so that's technically ahead. Okay. But your ace pilot's kind of the guy way in the back, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. So your leader's a perfectly fine guy to get. Yeah, I would start heading that direction. He can handle it. He's, uh, he's multi-talented. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, let's see. Um, Those little yellow ones. Are nice. Question: Is there a place to that submit nice. book corrections, suggestions, and edits? Um, sure. Yeah. If you've got FAQ questions, all that kind of stuff, there's a Discord you can join. Yeah, there's a Discord. You can find it on the website over at snarlybadger.com. Otherwise, you can just email uh, mail m a i l. Yep. At Badger.com as well. Happy to look at stuff. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. So their move on the nanobot swarms is what? Uh, their move? Oh, I see. You're, th you're thinking ahead. Yeah, yeah. Good man. Their move is four. Okay. Uh, so their threat range is five inches. So I don't think there's a way that I move closer to that event while also being outside of their threat range. Unlikely. Right. So I think I'm just going to have to just get in there, right? He's a tough guy. He's armored. Yeah. He's, he's, he is, he's right. He's your toughest person. So 10 inches, if I move twice, is all the way over there, but I couldn't then interact with that vent to turn it off. But ideally, I'm gonna get to that five inch uh, area, which I don't think I'm actually gonna get to. Maybe yeah, I should've just got gone... another five inches of movement, basically, to go somewhere. Yeah, maybe I should've just gone straight for the thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah just bring yourself 10 inches straight forward. Like, yeah, you'll end up right beside those guys. You can move eight, and he can double move. Do you, so do you I can one turn, I can go pew. Do you want him to do the vent job? I think he's probably best for the vent job. Okay. I can spend one turn to get them all the way over there, turn two, turn it off. Then I will go... Use the leader to tie those guys up maybe a bit. Oh, okay, let's do it. You cool. still have to kill everything in addition. <laughs> Is that actually part of the mission, to kill everything? Yep. Yep. Okay, so I'll move him in as a stopgap then. Yep. Um, all right, now we roll to retain initiative. Correct. Correct. So now that's your second time trying to retain initiative, it is now a 10, 10 plus. Up. Oh, oh it didn't go up by one. <laughs> All right, Takai. All right, uh, <laughs> here we go. Trying to get a 10 up. Definitely not. That's the same thing I wrote last time. Three. All right, so it goes to the evil people. And yes. the person who's closest to a person goes first. Uh, well, I'll 
answer a couple questions here real quick. Sure. Alessandro, is there a DM situation if you play this co-op? No, I'm just taking them through it since they didn't have a chance to like, you know, we're, we're doing this just as a, a whole group fun thing. Uh, but you, everything you need is you can play without any kind of GM or anything. First we had um, Euros. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had, and, and that was the beginning of the group fun, and now we're yeah. doing this part. Yeah, we had to have Euros. Euros were delicious. They were. In case just were the choice was Euros or teach them the rules. I don't need to explain how yeah. that turned out. <laughs> exactly. this, is, this is what I'm saying. Uh, and then when playing with three plus players, do you change the rules, board size, uh, warband size at all? Um, the challenges themselves are responsive to the number of uh, players you have playing co op. So. Mm -hmm. Um, DCs will change and move around, or, or the, sorry, the target numbers and the success numbers you need, or the number of enemies and those kinds of things. So um, the board doesn't get any bigger. The board doesn't get any bigger. No. You just you just rush into the same bay with more people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, attack the block is a is a reasonable strategy. If you like, I think the easiest like if you're interested in burning your way all the way through all the challenges and like quote unquote winning and discovering the mystery, this may not surprise you to learn that uh, cooperation has traditionally been how society has overcome very difficult challenges yeah. and apes strong together. <laughs> uh, so, you know, like if you if you just literally got you and three of your friends and you had four crews rolling here, you're gonna face a ton of enemies and things, but mm -hmm. it's your best chance that someone survives. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, we learned that in uh... 2001 Space Odyssey, the first 20 minutes, right? There you go, yeah. exactly. All right, so the bad guys go, and what do they do, Vince? All right, so again, we default to the normal enemy AI, which says the closest person to one of the, the players is going to activate. Well, guess what? It's the person you've put out there as bait. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be this next uh, bad guy, yep, nearest to him. Is he already within an inch? No, he's not. Okay. Scott that's was smart. That's okay. Strats. He scoots up. Could he have swung at me twice? No. Oh, okay. No, it, was just, it was a question whether or not he needed to move. Okay. He moves base to base, or does he move within an inch? He moves within an inch. Okay. Like generally, they'll stop it at you know, that kind of range, unless it says otherwise. Uh, okay, uh, so he moves up there, and now he is going to attack you. Uh, this is a you know he's making a close attack. His base combat is five, okay, um, but they have uh, a weapon. They have their little lash out with their swarms. So he gets plus one for that. So so you need to roll attack against your own boss. So he's making uh, with an attack of. Uh, combat of six. Okay, combat six, looking for evens. Here we go. Uh, we got a four or 12, but man, okay, I'm just... Uh, Whoa, Lordy. Uh, that's five cocked. successes. Okay. Let's call that one cocked. It was cocked. Cocked again. All right, doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> five successes. All right, no crits, no crit misses. They get one 12, but not two 12s. All right, you're good. One, one but not two ones. Very good. Uh, just to answer a question, how did my... Uh, how does the captain of my pirate crew have fly? It's a great question. Uh, the answer is jump boots, which is an advanced technology that only a few crews have access to, which is what the pirate crew has access to it, and then a few other people can as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, now, so you've got five potential damage on. What is your base combat not counting your weapon? My base combat is three. Okay, then that's what you roll. So your weapons only add to your combat score when you attack, because oh, it's a gun, it goes right. pew pew, it doesn't go block block. Oh, I love that. Okay, it's okay. a combat score. That exactly. also yes. is defense. Correct. Okay. Yep. Wonderful. So now, the only exception is, which which we won't worry about at the moment, is Soldier Boy, who's kitted for fighting in, in melee, um, is wielding the particular type of close combat weapon that adds to his defense in melee as well. And so that soldier is a brutal monster in melee, because it can just... Yeah, it, you'll see. It's at a any rate, it's a defensive tennis racket. It's a defensive tennis racket. He's also got armor. Yeah. He's he's tough. What if it was like a lightsaber? Or something? Or like all the strings, tiny little, little lightsabers. <laughs> Just turn them into fucking cubes. That's how you. That's how you kill the the space flies. That's it's like a zapper. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, it's kind of like from uh, Resident, Resident Evil. Evil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I also have. A armored jacket. Does that affect this roll at all? No, uh, it will in just a moment. All right. Um, uh, so, uh, actually, it should have done it a moment ago. I forgot you had an armored jacket of six. An armor of six. That's fine. I have an armor of four. Well, well, it it bumped up because of the the scientist you have is able to. Oh, he tuned me up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all right. Roll three dice. Roll three dice right now. I'm taking a possible five damage. Yep. I need even. Evens didn't get. I got one. Took one less. Okay. So. I don't remember how many dice you rolled on the attack that were a six or higher, um, but let's say you take another one less. So you take three damage. Three damage. Okay. The way the armor works is that it takes the attack roll against you, and again, it's still evens that are successes, but not the low evens. 
let's say. Oh. So if it's an armor of six, mm -hmm. then twos and fours, though are evens, don't actually count as oh. success. So it adds a target number and also the, so yeah. So it gives us the variability in a whole bunch of different math vectors that I don't understand what he does. So. But I still roll all of the dice for the exactly. hit, so it's really better for me, because I'm, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. So it's if really I, cool like mechanic. When the guy attack you, he probably had a couple of dice. So I just took I appreciate go. that. He has this little awesome ability called Survival Specialist. Once per game, when a crew member has reduced to zero, they are not. Correct. He, each of your commanders have certain special abilities. So he's a good guy to go out here and be base. He is, yeah. Because if he goes down, he can just be like, nah. All right. So he's not dead yet. Even if he does die, he might not die then. So we need to see if the bad guys retain initiative. John, you want to roll for that? They haven't done it yet, so we're still looking for a six, right? Six is... You I'm got it. 12. Uh, 12. 12 will do it. <laughs> the bad guys have retained uh, initiative. And yes, it's exactly what you think it is. The next closest guy is going to go, oh, hey, it looks like this dude's full of uh, prizes. And he's going to try to punch him right out of you. Yeah. What's with the goat? OK. That's the All right. So now, same combat, six. But this time, we'll remember that you have armor. Yes. <laughs> so, so we're looking for uh, uh, evens that are six or higher. Evens that are six or higher. Uh, we got one and eight. Okay, then one potential damage is all this guy and dealt. He did roll two fours. Jeez, so, so you're okay. So I not roll. I still roll all the same dice. Yeah. Still roll all the same okay. dice. Okay, yeah. it's just, it just it's sets the be target number higher. of what the, the even has to be, and also even. Ah, okay, so we got an eight. Cool. Uh, and then I have a armor. Sorry, combat value of three. So I get three dice. I'm looking to get just one even. Come on, Scott. One fucking even. There it is. Nice. You got two. <laughs> you got two. Woo! There all you right. go. You shake off. The <sighs> once. You learned how the swarms attacked yeah. the first time. It was dangerous. The second guy, you know, you're now ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay. now, now we're referencing Matrix. Okay. Yes. All right, cool. All right. Adam, the key is that the commander can have an additional piece of advanced deck. Okay. Oh. So that's, I'm you know, different Adam. I'm, I'm answering, I'm not watching the comments at the same time. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now, you, now they're going to try to retain again. It's their second retain, so it's on a 10. Okay. Passes back to you all. All right, what do you think's next here, John? Um, you want to go heal your dude with your healer? Well, they're not going to go again. So we got to worry about those. They're going to be double moving. Now, if you're in melee, can you not shoot a ranged attack? Oh, no, you can. It just has potential consequences. Potential consequences. We'll find consequences. Out. Okay, what if we started, you know, these guys are roughly eight. Can we start, like, moving your dudes back and shooting so they can't even double move to get with him? An inch. Can they double move to get within an inch? They have a move of eight, right? They have a move of eight, yeah. Okay. Get that closest can. guy and back can. him up and shoot at him. Or shoot um, at one of this guy. Don't shoot my guy. Though. Are you concerned about me shooting your guy, though? A little bit. He's only held onto his base by a little bit of blue tack. So if you <laughs> shoot him, you could tumble. I think even if I move the one that is closest away, this... Uh, Swarm of nanobots is still going to get within to hit that guy. Keep initiative. Okay. So remember, if they double move, they can't attack. So you're not at this point. You're safe from those three. Is there any problem of getting out of base? Or you can walk away. Just, just I choose to not. Yeah. You can choose to walk away. I think you considering say, that. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I think we deal with this as soon as we possibly can because I don't want to take any more unnecessary damage. Mm, I don't know. What do you think? What, yeah, I don't think turn one we can actually get to that because it takes an action to interact. Okay. But I can certainly move my my boss dude, just double move him and just set him up. Okay, so it doesn't make a difference if we do that now or... Yeah, yeah, yeah it, right. it doesn't matter. Okay, so I guess might as well try to shoot the guys that are approaching or, or try to finish that one off. Yeah, I feel like finishing one off is will help us... For future turns, he only it. has two left because we're only basically doing one or zero per shot with all this regular bullets that. Okay. Are uh, away. Giuseppe said the paper version of the rule book will arrive to the old world, or is it only for the USA? It's both, and in fact, there is a uh, UK printing as well, yeah, so they, they ship print locally. Demand, it's printed closer to where you live, so they've got a facility in the UK and one also in the United States. Beautiful. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll take one of my two soldiers here. Um, and I'll move. He has move of four inches. I'll move toward where the rest of my guys are. Mm -hmm. going. Does this game have permadeath? So if one of these guys yes. dies, they're yep. dead forever. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, so I'll talk about post game at the end. If you if you go down, if you're removed from play and out of action in the challenge, 
It does not necessarily mean you're dead forever. Okay. It means there are consequences. One of those consequences is death. Oh my. Okay. And yes, there is absolutely permadeath. Like, and it's not, by the way, an insignificant percentage of the outcomes of the post-game process. There are also things in the challenges that will have the potential to insta-kill you. They're not going to just be like sudden gotcha things. They're going to be things you see coming. So, for example, um, there are challenges where maybe like there's a giant bomb that's going to go off in the middle of the room. And like if you don't deactivate it in time, boop, boop, boop. Bomb planted. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like if that thing blows, your whole crew gets it goes out of action and is removed from play and everybody's rolling, right? That kind of thing. Then you're going to restart the game, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. <laughs> you did have to roll for poison. I did. You're right. Uh, so he had, I don't. Life skill. It's not based on my combat. It's a life no, skill. It's life skill. Yep. And my life skill. Yes, you need four. to activate. Yeah, so you have to make your life save check. Yep. All right. So this is for the poison gas in the room. Looking for a Yee Two of them. I got a six and an eight. So we're good. Even on that one. There you go. I'm good. noticing that these dice have a more tendency to. D12s on straight edge dice trays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's still good there with the poison. Yeah. Uh, this guy is a combat specialist, but we are not in combat. So I'm going to use his sidearm to shoot, which is a combat score of four. Probably not going to do damage to him, considering uh, this is not an energy weapon. So, yes. So your soldier, right here, your soldiers mm -hmm. have a base combat of four, mm -hmm. but they're six with their sidearm. That's that counts. The side oh, arm I thought that was only six. in melee. Nope. Okay. Um, and you actually, since this is the your, your soldier attacking, roll your dice, and then there's going to be a neat thing you can do here. Ooh. All right, so we got... One, two, three evens. Okay, so pull out the odds real quick. Now, com or soldiers have an all soldiers have an ability called combat specialist, where once per turn, turn is everything, um, they can choose to reroll two dice in a combat challenge test. Absolutely. Ridiculous. That could be on defense or offense. Ooh. Now, obviously, in this case, you know this guy isn't going to get attacked. Exactly. So you're like, yeah, let's let's go in harder yeah, exactly. for more damage. So you grab two of those dice and. and and re-roll re them. Let's get some more damage in here. Woo! That's a... That's a nice. Okay. Uh, I got one more. Okay. Hey. So we got four potential damage. All right. So now the bad guy has a combat of five. So he rolls five against you. I rolled that. Yeah. All right. And then he halves this after. I got four. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. Uh, so didn't even no, need a special ability. Didn't need it's just it. like all right. your bullets just went... Yeah, like all just, the nanobots like formed around the yeah. bullet and then just, <laughs> just traveled right through them. Yeah. Uh, okay, I love that. Cool. Uh, someone actually mentioned uh, not that other Jake loved the potential for storytelling and campaign games with this system. Um, they, they bought it immediately. Um, so is that was that an intent with the game, both 100%. being fans of RPG games? Yeah, I mean, like RPG. even in the last game in in uh, in Rain and Hell, which was an initially adversarial game, we added on something later on to put in solo and co-op after people asked about it. But it was still designed to be played as a campaign. Like, yeah, you can play a one-off real quick with your friend. That's great. But if you play it in a campaign, you start, like, losing people, gaining, you know, abilities. You know, you get titles. Like, all kinds of things that can happen. And this is the same situation where you, you lose some people. You get people who get, you know, really bumped up by uh, gaining experience points and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, 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 I, it's this kind of interesting sort of sweet spot between miniature game but it's got a bit of an RPG element to it. Not so much like you're, you know, you you know, and I've said this a bunch of times in videos, like you're not having to go and talk to the tavern owner to find out what's going on in town. Like not that kind of RPG element, but more like a video game RPG where you're beefing up your stats as you get XP and changing your person over the course of the game. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. All right. Cool. Roll team oh, to retain. Let me answer one other question here too. Uh, okay. um, question for Adam Vince. Do you think the movement would translate well to a grid map? Yeah, sure, of course. Like there's no reason you couldn't have like multiple grids or something. It's it's super easy. Sure. So no reason. All righty. Yes. Gator. Do you retain? Does it reset to six? Yes. Yep. Every time you're trying to retain again, it goes back to six. Hey, right. we do. All right. What do you think? You want to take do a crack at this maybe guy? Maybe go with your other soldier and let's do, do it. the same thing. Let's do it. All right. He's got to move forward. Make, make a little neat wall so your our, our squishy like medics and stuff don't get uh, target. Okay. So should I should I move him there instead? You think? Or mm -hmm. was moving this way fine? Yeah, that's. I think that's probably fine. Okay. Um, I will shoot the man who is almost dead. So same thing. You've got six. On the attack. All right. We're looking for evens, and I got two rerolls I can make. I got a couple. Three. I got three successes, and I can reroll two of these once per turn. You can roll two, three, roll two of them once per turn. 
Excellent. Heck yeah, I got one more. So I got four yep. net successes. Oh, you gotta roll your poison at the start yeah, of the Yeah, activate Ooh, okay, so remember that four. Uh, then my life is four. I need two evens. I got one even, so I take one point of damage. Yep. And so what's his full health amount? I think it's four. Soldier, so, soldier. question for you: As my life reduces, I make life checks. Do I roll less dice? No. no. Oh, great question. Okay. 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 No. Yeah, it's a great question. No, you always, regardless of damage, you still use the, the same thing. skill, basically. Yeah. Gotcha. The only thing that will do that is if something actively says it reduces your number for challenge tests. Okay. And uh, I don't trust like, you to make this roll. Damage so. is a separate stat than life. <laughs> yeah. Don't have me roll. And then yes, defense. Six dice, right? Uh, five dice. Okay. Oh, okay. I messed up. That was actually. Uh, a terrible roll for defense. Uh, so let's hope it doesn't revert. We got just one, just uh, two. Right? Oh, is that an eight or a three? It's a three. Oh, it's a three. Just, a, just, a, just one. So it goes through. Three go through, but it reduces to half. We're rounding up or down here. Down. So down. Okay. Takes one. Takes one damage. Ugh. Oh, you got there though. But enough bullets. Eventually, tiny little robots die. Yeah. Well, one. Well, I think. We need to have my ace pilot just toss his gun to each other person and like yeah. an assembly line and they all <laughs> shoot it and then pass it down. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we retain again. Now you're on a 10 plus. On a 10 plus. Didn't get it. Got three. All right. Okay. So now, and it should go without saying, by the way, but the, the enemies are immune to their guns. They obviously don't care because they are just full of robots? tiny robots. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I never stated that, but with that, that is not something we're not doing. Okay. Fortunately, the enemy activations here should be pretty straightforward. Um, the closest guy is going to be this dude here in the front corner. And yep, there's we know there's nobody within range, so he'll just move his full double move up to bring himself closer. Yep, towards your chief engineer. There you go. Rob, you know, he'll, they'll always move toward the the closest, uh, you know, player fig, barring some other AI in the individual challenge. Uh, and Ooh, then roll to retain. Retaining initiative. They do. 11. Do it again. Again. Gonna form a conga line. So my leader has fly. Does that mean if I moved eight inches, I could put him on top of the train? Yes. Fly well, means you ignore vertical verticality when you move, but you have to land on a surface that you can land on towards you. Uh, they roll to retain again. Now needing a ten. It really. All right, John. Uh, there is a simple rule, by the way, when you have terrain as to where your people can go, and that rule is if it sits. It fits. <laughs> oh. When you set down a fig, if you can take your hand away from it and it stays there, right. then that's fine. We're using cat logic. Yeah. I love it. Exactly. Yes. Correct. <laughs> it's the simplest way to navigate terrain. If it sits, it fits. I love it. Okay. okay. Right, John, I, think, I think we need to end this this monster. Okay. Um, I'm just like my engineer. I'd like to be able to like get over there to futz with this. Well, but if move. but if I no but if I double move next turn, I don't get to shoot twice. So it's better for move, shoot, and then move, interact. Do that, sure. To me, that you guys have advanced sense. tech in this game. What did you just say? If you double move, you can't do what next turn? Um, even if I double move this turn, I next turn I'm kind of just wasting a move because I can't oh, replace you, one of my moves mm. with a different action. So if you wow. move and say shoot now, and then move and interact next time, that's the most efficient okay, way. That was, yes. that was although you could I was that. Yeah, yeah, you could double sense. move to it, interact with it, and then walk away and be somewhere else you need to be. Right. Yeah. Sure. Right, 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 right. I'm on, yeah, if you're on the way. Mm -hmm. um, I think just for the sake of just go doing quick, we're going to have my leader go. He's got a life of seven to not get. Uh, we mentioned, by the way, stairs and ladders and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I in the book. One, in the book. Yeah, yeah. two, three. Okay. So he succeeds. He's got a double move of 16 inches. This is who? Is your, oh, is your boss? My boss man. Yes, your boss man. Boss man puts him. Yes, so the leader has a jump pack, as you can see, um, which means not only does the leader have fly, but it has a speed of eight. There's other, like the advanced tech is the hardest thing to get your hands on for your individual crews, but there's lots of fun stuff in there. You can have little drones that follow you around and protect you. You can have point to point teleporters that, that uh, where you can literally just look and then shoot over to that point on the board, stuff like that. So movement. Whoa. As long as you have line of sight, as long as you have line of sight, you can move wherever you can. Whoa, I need that. Okay, Roll six, thing. six, hey. eleven. There you go. All, All right, right. so keep going. Uh, Scott, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. 
I think it would be nice to if your medic can get to your hero, That's and not heal thinking. him. Let's see a different kind of mechanic in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so my my uh, my medical officer has a movement of four, and you gotta get the poison first. Um, yes, you are right. And my medical officer has a life skill of four, so I'm looking for two evens. I got one even. Did I take one point of damage. Yeah. So what was his full health? Uh, three. Sorry, four. So it's down to three. Um, is this the infinity guy? Is your Yes, sir. Medic. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to try to move toward my leader. I don't think I'll be able to make it. Uh, where is the tape? Now, but what you could say, you can use medical attention. And you have another injured person on the way. So you mm. could move and then heal that person. And next turn, move again and heal your boss. Wonderful. So to heal someone, I'm assuming I need to be within, within an inch. Within an inch, within interaction. Okay. So I'll move a little bit beyond them. Yep. And stay within... That pewter model, love, love a bit, of, little, little love weight bit on that one. Okay, love it. Now, your medical officer has a special ability called medical attention. Okay, I know exactly what you think it would be. Basically, they make an intelligence uh, challenge test. Now, you'll notice your medical officer has a big old series of numbers next to it. <laughs> yeah, what is this bomb sequence here? <laughs> uh, four, five, seven. This is the seven is what you use for your medical attention checks because the doctor has became well prepared with all the gear. Okay. So when making a medical attention roll, it is an X6 target number roll. X just means any number of successes count, you're just rolling for six. Okay? Okay. So Okay, so I need I need six successes? No, you need six is your target number. Only sixes and above count. Okay. But you're looking for evens, 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 evens as always. always. Evens and sixes above. And any amount of successes is a hit point taken off. Yep. Yep. Or heals. Exactly. Right. Okay. Evens and six or higher. I got two twelves. And oh, so you got a crit success, which is gonna be relevant. And a two. Is this um, a two? Two doesn't count. Yeah, that's right. Six or higher. So what does a crit do for this kind of check? Okay. Whenever you crit, it always doubles the number of effective successes. So four hit points? So you would be able to restore up to four hit points. Now Ooh. the person you're healing is only injured one, but there you go. The medical officer's like, no, no, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Right? Bandaged him up real Big good. old band-aid slap. Is, you can back. you can critically Super succeed at any kind of check. Yes. And when you're trying to you know, interact with these things, which making a new gun is not the easiest check in the world, right? So you can, your smart people can critically succeed on those and suddenly, oh, got it. Are there mechanics in the game that like allow crits on different numbers, on tens perhaps, or, or eights? So at the moment, nothing played with changing the crit mechanic. And the okay. reason for that is, I was, I was actually like, that is something that I thought about. That's certainly valid design space. Yeah. The reason I didn't do anything like that is because once you start playing with that, it can go off the rails very fast right. in the statistics of like doubling and things like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so much like we we I learned my rules for my lessons from uh, third edition D and D, uh, and <laughs> playing with expanded crit ranges goes sideways real fast. Yes. So. Yeah. All right. So let's see if we retain initiative. Uh, we do. Got him. Okay. All right, John. You may continue. Uh, can my medic heal his guy. Yes. Okay. I think Whoa. maybe... <laughs> Collaboration. Yes. <laughs> you, you are friends here. Okay. I think maybe... I'm not I'll... used to being John's friend. Right? No. Uh, we're normal enemies. Also, inadvertently, our tape measure here is uh, blue and yellow, which seems to match the game. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. a brand of tape measure, but, you know, that's coming to the shop in two weeks, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Just yellow and blue tape measures. Yeah. All right, so, um, it's easy. Just, 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 <laughs> just <over>. resell it. <laughs> exactly. My engineer is going to go. He's got a life score of six. Yep. That is, uh, one, two, three, and then cocked. So that's three you're successes. Good. So um, let me, well, while you're doing your thing here, I'm going to talk for a moment about the kinds of different saves you encounter in this game. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice in this particular challenge, there is a upon activation, everybody has to make a save thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you notice it's pretty easy for John's guys to do it because he's the most elite crew with the highest base stats, right? Like he isn't very often taking damage from it. Right, yeah, I okay. noticed my guys taking damage more often than his. Yeah. Right, and if you're the, the biggest number of crew where you can have eight people and you have an even lower base score, then that, that kind of thing is very threatening to that uh, force, mm. right? However, there are other challenges that are more, that you'll encounter that are more like a, only affect a single thing once per turn but it's a huge number, right? Mm -hmm. And so like if you're if you're a, a sort of horde crew where you just have like nine people running around, 
and it's like, and one little guy gets smoked off of failing one of those checks. You're like, <laughs> these things happen. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, he, he, was, he was a red shirt. He was yeah, exactly. Whereas that's, if that's you're an elite raiders. crew yeah. who only has, you know, four people and one of your guys gets smoked, it's like, whoa, okay, this is a problem. We got, we got money less people now. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, so my engineer for his combat skill says 4 7. What is yes. the 7 reference? Okay, so your engineer. Uh, it, the seven reference is the fact that when he makes a certain type of test, he has a, a, a much higher benefit to it because of the gear he has. Okay, so it's not for the the attack though. No, correct. Okay, so he's just gonna attack this dude. He's got one le- health remaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, your engineer has. Oh no, your engineer is combat four seven right there. I thought you were talking about your reaction. He says yes. He has he has a full seven. Everybody in the pirate crew, by the way, has like wicked awesome guns. <laughs> wicked awesome. Yeah, pirates Shout get out. cool yeah. guns. Yeah. Yeah. I got three successes. Okay. And then they roll five. Yes. And they got one, two, three successes. <laughs> so that is not a. Those nanobots, you guys, are, those you nanobots are a tough. Five damage and three mistakes? Or three successes, three successes. Oh, shoot. Sure. Okay. Um, is this our second roll for keeping going? No. First. Wait, am I wrong with that? I rolled a 12 either way. Hey, let's matter. go! Yes, this was your second roll. Yes, it, it was, yeah. Because yeah, I, I rolled Scotty, you, want, you got three, three people with I do. Should we, start, should we just try and kite these guys a little bit? Maybe stay out of the, the four inch so I don't get double punched? Or, um, anything out of one inch is not going to be a double punch. They still got one guy back there. I'm just wondering if like we... You, you put people on either side, so not one person is getting ganged up on, so one goes this way, one goes this way, instead of two guys both, like, doing this and both of them attack one dude. Should I run a guy this way and then go the other way, maybe? Uh, take a kind of game the system here, take advantage of the, the AI and the way they move? Yeah. Or we or we can just keep going this way and work to this and then recoup, recoup. I guess my concern is that, does this have a cooldown on it? Can you just... Poop guns out of it. Everybody who can who can hit it, you can make. Okay, so you like, make a gun. We don't need to split up necessarily. Like so, why, why Un- we... unless is one of these guys your engineer? Um, yes, it is. Yes. He has he has the veteran engineer. Yeah. Um, alternatively, this guy is closer to that one than this one. Could he make it there and by turn two, but not here? Yeah, you know I'm saying. I think you're right, actually. So my engineer has a eight. Oh, I can't see what he can do. Oh, if you don't. Totally, he totally can get there. Yep. So maybe I should send this little splinter squad over there to cover him, but I think they might get eaten alive. Um, I mean, but that's kind of fun. Should we try it out? What's the worst that can happen? They'll die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is fun. Yeah. Which is also fun. Yeah, let's try it out. We can shoot from basically any range in here as long as you have a yep. line of effect. So I think, should I move and then shoot and then move and interact like you just did with your yeah, dude? Yeah, that's what I think. Maybe is combat better for the uh, the engineer? Um, yes. So the engineer, uh, the chief engineer, has a combat of three five. Okay. Um, because he, you know, he does have a, a five because he does have a sidearm same as everybody else. So uh, while you're doing that, uh, I will answer a question. Is there a, an accounting of models needed for enemies? Um, we're gonna put up a little thing so that people can reference it. But um, like you and I talked about that, mm-hmm. doing a little yeah. model reference thing. But here's the short answer: you need. Six to twelve, depending on how many crews you're playing with. So, like, if you're if you're gonna play it solo the whole way through, you, you basically need a max of six enemies ever. If you're playing co-op, you need a max of twelve enemies ever, because the most enemies that ever get generated mm-hmm. are six per crew participating. That's the max. And uh, in a perfect world, you have six that look vaguely organic and six that look vaguely robotic. Um, Mutants. Right. We tried to typify, typify, typologicalify. Don't go there. Got it. We've already had that one. Yes. <laughs> we tried to set it up so that there. No. Yes. <laughs> so that you like the the creatures you run into are largely either uh, uh, organic or robots. We wanted to make it so it was a little bit simpler because if it was a situation where we were like, well, you've got this type and this type and this type and this type, right. then as the modeler, you're like, well, now I got to buy more of these right. things mm-hmm. and whatever. And if just like, oh, it's either robots or non robots, yeah. and there you go. And that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it okay. seems like. You made your life save when you activated, right? Nope, I didn't. Okay. It, I just that? can't remember to do that. <laughs> no, nah, it's okay. It seems like there's also enough description of what the specific monster is that if you were really into it and wanted to have a full miniature, you know, oh, sure. exact models, you oh, can also oh, do that. Yes. Yeah, you absolutely can. But we also want to make it so that people 
you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. But yeah, absolutely. We've got like medical drones or droids. We've got, or the drones. Yeah. Drones. Um, we've got um, like repair drones. There's all kinds of different explanations, mm -hmm. but yeah, you, it's it's up to you how you want to do it. Yeah. So quick thing, let me just shout out Xanagor, Jack, Hydraxos, and Mr. Moody Minis. Thank you for the subs. Hydraxos says, paint more minis to slay the gray. A hey. little combo right there. Hey. We had a question from uh, Serbia Thrax in the chat here. Am I am I recall right that the max enemy count was six of either robots or the other kind? Yes. Yes. You are right. All right. Cool. Um, so I moved to my life uh, save. I uh, didn't take any damage. Got two evens. And I'm gonna swing at that back nanobot cloud. Okay. Is there a name for these guys? Are yeah. You... Swarm drones. Swarm are drones. You, are you going within a melee? I'm within one inch. I Why? believe. Okay. Why? Because my roll more combat dice that way. Your, your guys' sight. You know, all your guys have sidearms. They all have guns. You don't have to get closer to roll more dice. Oh. You can be far away. Combat doesn't mean close combat. Yes. Combat is just your combat score. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter because either way I can move uh, four mm -hmm. inches to get to that next thing anyways. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. That's, that's I, true. They can't. You should do this because yeah. this might actually work against you and hurt you and it would be really fun to show this mechanic. Let's do it. So, okay. <laughs> all right. So this guy has a combat score of five. All right. Okay. And I need... You, you, you're running by him and just trying to pull your pistol up and, and I assume your chief engineer turns it sideways. Absolutely, he's, yeah. he is yeah. a dog, definitely. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're looking for evens. We got a 10, a 6, a 4. So we got three evens. Okay. That's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So three potential damage on. Now, again, the uh, Swarm Drones have a combat of five, so they roll five dice for defense. Um, and we got... Oh, darn. I was really hoping to get four. He should have gone the other... If he flipped it the other way around, it would have been so much more fun. Okay, okay. But that's okay. Um, so one... Uh, so you had three potential damage, the one off reduced it to two, and then one. So you do one damage to the thing. Hey -o. So the Swarm Drone has six life left. I would have killed him. Yeah. We're learning. Yeah. Also, okay, so now we get to retain, but one idea maybe, maybe we should send a medic over here with these guys. My guy is closer, but your guy hasn't activated yet. Maybe. I mean, I can double move him that way. Yeah, like, I, I, Make them last a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, let's roll to see if we retain before we move quite ahead. I got a seven, so we do. Yes, you do. Right. You want me to just double move over there? Or I can, like, which is the one? This guy is down. I can move there. And then and I, I can move there and heal this turn, and then, like, there. I, I won't be able to get up to that guy, though. I mean, they're going to die in, like, an instant. Like, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna go back. Darn. <laughs> I think, yeah, move, heal, and then I will place my models in such a way where if one is wounded, I will move guys with more health closer to the remaining NPCs. My life save. medical officer has a total of six life, and I got one, two, three, four, five successes, so he's super not scared of poison. Yes, and as a, as a future thing for your medical officer, your medical officer and your crew also has a hazmat suit, which means that he gets actually plus one. Okay. He's well, she's like a nerd against uh, toxic gases. I was going to say within an inch right there. He is a nerd. I mean, both are true. <laughs> both are true. Okay. okay. Now you're going to make your medical uh, attention check, which is your intelligence. So you have five. I don't, I don't have the cool bonus like Scott. Uh, in this case, no. He didn't, you didn't get the extra bonus. Oh, sorry. So your guy's actually a better you're, healer. I got tuned up. Yeah, your fire crew didn't, didn't invent. This is a harmonious culture. He wants to see everybody thrive. Absolutely. This is cutthroat pirates. They're like, yeah, whatever you die, you die. Uh, six plus evens. Yes. I, got, I got one success, which is all I need. You got one. So I moved one damage. Go. Okay. okay. Now I'm looking for a 10 plus to retain. That is correct. Mm. That's a 10, hey! baby. Uh, Scott, all my guys have gone, so your two guys. Okay. Um, while I go, I'm just gonna try to shoot that, and I can shoot from the max. Distance. You can shoot from anywhere you want. Does like shooting through people matter? You have to be able to see line. You have to be able to see the miniature. But in general, you know, if you get down to the pig level, they're gonna be able to see through the other thing. Okay. Um, while I do that and make all the necessary rolls, um, someone is asking, what is the average game length? So obviously, this is going slower because we're sort of explaining things. Right. But through all of my, you made your life safe. Cool. That's it. Through all of my testing, I found that the average game length outside of the sort of act culmination challenges, there are act big like act tenders that are more complicated and big. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are 30 to 45, 45 minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Generally. Once you've got the hang of the rules, it's, it, yeah, it it's goes pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. 
So this is my and scientist. The, the reason for that is because the, the idea is to play the campaign. Yeah, which can, you don't want to take can come time. up to be a dozen games. You know? Easily. Yeah. All right, taking some shots at uh, the guy from, from downtown. Indeed, I got two successes. Okay. The, that guy, stole roll five against, in uh, defense against. Yep, okay. There's six on the attack, five on the defense. We got 112 and one six. So that's two successes. Two mm -hmm. successes. These boogers are hard to kill. They are indeed. One more. Get him. Over your life. <laughs> My ace pilot has a life of four. I roll four dice. When you roll your, since you're on your ace pilot now, did you roll a one at all? I did. Okay. You may re-roll that one. Every time the ace pilot rolls a challenge test, they may re-roll a single roll of one. Because oh. they are the ultimate ace. Yeah, okay. I, I, I actually uh, was able to get two successes anyways. Are that oiled up playing volleyball? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's how they get ready for the, That's how they get ready to go into the space station. Uh, yeah, they get you a slap on that oil. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. My ace pilot has a combat value of five. Mm -hmm. We're shooting that wounded swarm drone. Come on, don't forget. Uh, if you get a one, you can re-roll it. I did not, but I did get two successes. Meh. All right. <laughs> And uh, way more. <laughs> four. Uh, yeah, so uh, four net successes for the defense roll. Doesn't it feel good to roll for the enemies and get all the good rolls on the enemies' rolls? No, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so Last that... to go is that one little dangler out there in the back. Oh, yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. That's their go. Uh, so I had a question here while you're at, because I did, well, first of all, did your chief engineer move within five? I hope not. No. Okay, close. Yes. But no. So yes, that thing will just double move up to you. Uh, Gregory Richard asked, how repeatable is the campaign? Say you play with two different groups. Um, very, very repeatable, especially if you're talking about two groups going through it simultaneously. Because the paths you take are winding, because it's a branching narrative, um, you could follow completely different paths, play completely different challenges, uh, you know, not have the same experience. Even if you manage to get all the way through the thing, which is not easy, uh, there you, you could replay the whole thing and end up with a whole, you know, or, or a largely different set of challenges. And uh, there is a slight legacy element to this as well. If you win and manage to achieve certain things, which I will not say anything more about, uh, you can permanently affect the nature of your space station. So it's like a legacy board game. Oh, my. For your future playthroughs. OK. Wonderful. So that was one whole turn, correct? That was one whole turn. All right. We're now gonna... we're in the thick of it, though. All right. We're going to go to a brief. We'll be right back. We're not going to take a pause after every single turn. Just this one, maybe about five minutes. And so when we're back with that, we'll go into round two and finish up the rest of this scenario. We'll be back in like about five minutes. All right. Uh, give me one second to get that ready. All right. We'll give You're okay. one second to get that ready. We'll, we'll look and see if there's any questions for just a moment while he looks that up. Yeah, okay. Some there you go. Absolutely. Uh, okay. We're sponsoring the stream beverage right now where we got Diet Dew and a Sparkling Ice. Yes, that's who, that's bang. You today's guys, sponsors. Anybody you want a bang? <laughs> Arclay, thank you for the two months of Prime Top, and I appreciate it, my dude. Uh, is there any downtime mechanics, like buying gear or role-playing? Uh, yes, there is an in-between challenge thing. There is not buying gear because you are exploring into the depth of the space station. There's no store. There's an, yeah, there's no store down here in, in this place. Uh, there will come a point in the campaign that you will reach after a certain number of challenges, a variable number of challenges, uh, that is a point of no return. There are multiple points of no return where you cannot backtrack or go back to previous rooms or things like that because of things that occur within the, the overall story. From that point, you are stuck in. Until you hit that first one, you could always choose to just say, you know what? Good. We're going to go back, We're to, gonna the go back to the lobby. I don't want this anymore. I don't like this. This wasn't as fun as I thought. I don't like getting punched in the face. And you can go back. And then you can, you can basically reset your crew. You can go back to full people and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but the, you, you will very quickly cross the point where that is possible to do. Um, but we give you a little cushion. We don't, we don't just throw you right in the deep end of the pool. Um, now, but there is in-between challenge uh, activities. Um, there is a post-game process. And, and lots of unusual and quirky things that can happen. Um, and there is, I don't want to say there's not stuff you can't find down in the depths of the space station. There are, as you're exploring the challenges, certainly there is, uh, 
you know, alien and ancient and forgotten technology. Maybe there's a few unusual allies you could find down there. You know, there's, there's lots of things beyond just death, but it's mostly death. Mm. Yeah. There's a Taco Bell. There is a Taco uh, Bell down there, of course, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yikes. So it's just, it is like a hard shell and beef. Yeah. That's yeah. it. All right. Well, thank you for those questions. We'll be right back in about five minutes.
Oh, yeah. Deuces. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, we're here for turn two now. Took a little break. Thank you for your patience. We appreciate it. Uh, Vince, what do we do at the top of turn two? All right, so now that we're at the top of two, again, because you're at the top of the turn, the players have the first activation. So it goes back to you guys. You guys may choose a model to activate. Turn that gas Yeah. Off. Turn that gas. Okay, so we'll see. It's gonna... right, so first he has to do his own life check because he, he hasn't turned it off yet. Correct. So he's got, a, my leader has a life of seven. That is also Living correct. his best life. And rolling one, two, three successes minimum, not counting the cock dice. And then I'm going to spend my first activation to turn off the juice. Yes. How do I turn off juice? Okay, so uh, this is where when many of the uh, many of the obstacles that are in there that are non-enemies, uh, you have to interact with. And interacting with things, you uh, generally have to be within an inch of them. There is an edge that allows you to break that but you have to be within an inch, and uh, which you are. Your leader is within an inch of the vent, and it will tell you in the challenge how exactly you interact with it. In this case, you may make a reaction challenge test four to turn the vent on and vent out the room. So you need four successes. <laughs> your leader has a reaction of four, so you have to roll four dice. But don't is, worry, it's okay. Is this cumulative, maybe? Maybe? I That's right, I'll just roll... Four evens right now. Put Oh, close. Very close. Three out of four and no 12. Or one 12. That's okay. So, just like combat, you don't have to kill an enemy with one shot of the gun. Yeah. You don't have to complete these challenges in one go either. He turns the wheel up. halfway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, right. Is like, one success remaining on the dueler? Correct. So, everything. Uh, unless it is a save, or unless it specifically says you must make it in one roll, right, which is a, a single roll challenge, uh, then it's all just, it's just like combat, right? You're just putting successes toward it, you're working it. Yeah, you're turning the wheel to open the vents. Not, not quite open yet. Okay. And unless you want to move, that is your leader I, I, I do, I do want to move. Okay. Because I, because I can fly. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go up here. Mm. Um, I did think of a question while I was at the urinal. Vince, um, is base size matter in this game? Is there a ideal size or is it kind of like rain and hell where we, you know, 25 to 40, all kind of good? Yeah. Okay. So great question. And that's pretty much the answer. 25 to 40 is all pretty good. It'll all interact pretty normally. It doesn't really matter. You can you can drift a little bit above that if you have something special or a cool fig you want to work in there, but you know it, it, you can't really put down like eighty millimeter or hundred millimeter base models in this. It's going to start getting wonky real quick. Just try to try to physically occupy the space because a lot of these challenges have you know a bunch of terrain and objectives and stuff like that. What if I want my my entire crew to just be um, Imperial Knights? Uh, that's fine, but you got to scale everything up accordingly. <laughs> Got to play it in your living room, right. yeah, yeah. on the floor. Do we keep initiative? We do. We do. Yes, your first roll to retain on a six. So you guys have the second choice, John or Scott. Boy, oh boy. You want my this guy to shoot him? A person with the energy gun should maybe shoot someone that has more hit points left because they have a better potential of doing more damage. Maybe my combat dude, he did pretty well. He did, but he doesn't have that energy weapon, so he did, all damage is reduced by half. You know? If he, yeah, he's just got to get two through after saves, and he only has, he only has one. Oh, you're saying should he do the killing? Yeah, absolutely. Punch yes, yes. Punch that swarm drone. Okay, so first my soldier with life of six, because I, I, I are we kind of resigned to the fact that we're gonna have to do a whole other turn with poison side. Seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because um, who's getting there? I don't think anyone physically can. Yeah, what's up, Adam? Someone asked in the chat, uh, where can they uh, get the game? Uh, and it is www.spacestationzerogame.com. And yeah, if you're in the Twitch chat, exclamation point, SSG, or excuse me, SSC, uh, or Space Station Zero, will bring you a link to the site as well. Exclamation mark, SSZ. All right. Okay, so I passed my life check on my soldier, and then he is just going to tennis racket this guy in, in 
The robot head again. Combat score of eight. Combat special specialist. Reroll two dice from combat challenge once a turn. I feel like someone didn't mention that to me last turn. When, but, you, make, when you make a swing, can you make your best tennis like rackets like hit sound effect that you can? Yes. Okay. okay. Ready. It's going to be after the dice are rolled. It'll then you'll hear the sound. Okay. <laughs> Why do we need to wait for that? <laughs> All right. If you've ever watched women's tennis, Steffi Graf had this great, like, ah, uh, every time she hit it. And so that was what I was. Okay. I, I like tennis. Um, one, two, three successes. I'm going to use my re-roll. Oh, he does have re-roll one? No, engineer. Nope. Your soldier can roll two dice in a single combat challenge return. So I'm going to do it now. You won't be able to do it in the future. I'm living for today. Until so, yes, until the next turn. Turned it into two more successes, baby. Nice. So that is a total of five successes. Okay. And he rolls five dice, and he gets one success. Chop him down. Boom! You've been tennis racketed. Did did did. We, we killed, killed a robot. robot. We, we killed, killed probably like 7,000 7, robots, robots that were all pushed together into one robot. <laughs> it only took us 20 activations, but we <laughs> got one down. All right, now I can still move with this guy, yeah. and he moves four. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to be a tiny bit Lucy with my goosey here. Uh, I'm going to kind of go up and help you out if I can. So that's three. There's about another. Are there supporting attacks in this game? Does it, does it make it easier to hit someone who's engaged by multiple allies? Uh, no. However, um, your crew actually benefits from being near your allies. It hasn't come into real effect yet. But because you're a harmonious crew, whenever your people are making cha challenge tests of any kind, okay, that means combat, offense, defense, etc. Whenever that happens, uh, and you have, and th they're within an inch of another crew member, Okay, you get to reroll two dice. I haven't brought it into it yet because I don't like you haven't been making a ton of checks where you're near other people. Sure. Um, but yes, so, so that, that is, is a, a like harmonious nice crew. You want to kind of exist in pairs. Um, or sorry, you may reroll a single dice. I apologize, not two, a single dice. Uh, soldiers, right? Right, yeah. exactly. So, so the, the point, point is, is your soldier, Z, if, if they're standing next to each other and they both shoot, then once a turn, they could reroll up to three dice, right? Two for their base ability and one for being uh, part of a harmonious culture as they help each other constantly. Okay. okay. Ten up. Keep it. Ten up. Retain. That's a no. Do not. Okay. But you have felled one enemy and you made some progress on the vent. Yeah. So what do we do now that there are multiple enemies that are very close to our people. Who goes first, Vince? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so when, when there, there are multiple enemies within close range, range, right? So within an inch, basically, uh, which you currently have four within an inch, I believe, is what the number is. Um, some of the challenges will direct you as to who goes first. So for example, they will attack, some things will attack the crew members with the lowest remaining life, right? Uh, in other words, like some, some things are smart and will know to blood hunt and try to kill you, right? Um, some uh, will just be pretty random and just kind of tell and, and kind of go after whatever. In this case, because of the, uh, the nature mm -hmm. of the swarm drones, um, they're going to, uh, we're just gonna randomly decide. So you just need to, one of the enemies that is within an inch of you randomly attacks. Right. So there's one, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, we roll five, six. One, two, three would be this guy right here. All right. Um, okay, you said my guy, so I'll roll for him. Uh, the swarm drone has a combat value. Is it is it five still? Yeah, yeah the, the combat, combat the, 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 the drone three. in combat on the attack has a combat value of six because of their swarm stuff. Okay. So it's a six, and we're looking for evens that are six and higher because I have an armor value of six. That's nice. Right. Um, All right, we got 112. Um, so only one net damage to my leader. My leader has a combat value of, I'm just dropping dice, um, three when rolling defense dice. That's right. So I need one even of any kind. And, and did your leader make his life check at the beginning of the turn for the save? Uh, 
Uh, I'm He's attacking me. I am not. Oh, yeah, the bad guy. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, please. Come on, Vince. This is your I game, bro. Yeah, Keep up. No, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> oh, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, All right, here we go. Um, Got one even, so we are even. You negate the one damage, and your leader's armor once again keeps you safe, and the bad guys roll to retain. Uh, Vince and Adam, can the bad guys crit too? Yes. Oh no. And it has exactly the consequences you think it does. <laughs> they do not retain. Oh, all right. Who do we want to do next? We have to remember who's activated too. Yeah. Especially for bad guys now that we're stuck in. Sometimes it's a good idea to have a little token or a little, you know, something to put next to him just to remind. Especially when you've got a big group like this. If you're playing just a solo game, it's a little bit easier for you to keep track of. But even with like, you know, the the, the big crew where you've got nine, it's still not a bad idea. Okay. All right. What do you think, Joe? I think. Is, is it, it better? better? No, we, we, we got, got more dudes, dudes and only two over here and less over the here. I could have this guy try to smack the guy that's already got one hit on him and he hasn't activated yet. I love that idea. Okay. In, in the meantime, I'm just going to randomly make him go over here. Um, and he's going to shoot that guy. So first he's got to do his life save. Mm -hmm. It is my ace pilot. Don't forget the ace pilot can reroll a single roll one if he gets one every time he rolls a challenge. Test. Got it. A 12 and a 10 is exactly what I need to survive. Now, combat score of seven. Uh, which is eight because his weapon has been tooled up by your oh, engineer. Oh, he's ripped. Okay. I can reroll a single one. That is one, two, three. Four, five successes, no ones, a single 12. Okay. Five successes. Yes. Good job. And then he still rolls five. Mm hmm. Then he doesn't get this negatives on this. Good. Good. Half inch. Oh, crap. You have an energy weapon. Um, ouch. <laughs> Three successes. You got four, I think, right? Well, that's a nine. That's a nine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he takes two damage. That's right. He's from six down to four. And uh, we try to retain on a six plus. We get a seven. Black be clack. Uh, Scott, what do you want to do? Mm, I'm going to look for tokens. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, I have two soldiers next to each other. So they're benefiting from that harmonious connection. They could go. Um, maybe they could shoot at the other group of swarm drones. Because again, there is, I mean, it's. It's 2v many over there and 3v3 over here. So I think some amount of support might be might be a good option. Um, so I have to be within an inch uh, to get that harmonious benefit, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah. Within an inch of any, any other, other member, member of your group. When okay. You make the challenge test. So I will just kind of shuffle over here maybe mm -hmm. and then should crack at that guy. He's got four wounds left. So my soldier has a combat value of six with his sidearm, and he gets to add on a dice or reroll something because of that harmonious benefit. Uh, so roll your dice first, and then it's all rerolls okay. from there. All right, here we go. Looking for evens. We got quite a few, actually. Um, four. OK. Now, remember, he has combat specialist, so you can always reroll two dice once per turn. But your harmonious also just gives you one die that you can use every time you make a check. OK. Um, why didn't I just roll that at the same time with everything else? It's a reroll. Oh, okay. So I only have two dice to reroll, so I won't benefit from that this time. Um, but I will reroll regardless. Look at that. Whoa, two no, twelves. No. Woo! Woo! Yahtzee, baby! Right? Yahtzee's the thing in this game, right? <laughs> okay. Shoot! 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 Dials in at the last minute to 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 turn it into a crit off of the combat specialist reroll, giving you a total of six successes, I believe. Eight. Or uh. Well, how many, how many total? Oh, six, yeah. right, 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 right. six okay. total right. Meaning it doubles into 12 damage. <gasps> oh, okay. Really? Uh, he found the hive swarm queen in the middle of the mix, I guess. Uh, but yes, the the, the uh, swarm drone still gets five dice to defend. Looking for evens. Mm -hmm. All right, looking for evens again. And before crit, uh, two evens. So down to eight, reduced to four. That is the exact amount I needed to kill this idiot. Yes! I hate you, you tiny little robots. Was it this guy who we just went? Yes. Yep. Okay. We Excellent shot. shot. We're using tokens from a dead game because this is the only use they now have. Uh, 
Guild, Guild Ball tokens, tokens now represent a token. Uh, the unit has been activated. <laughs> really? Okay, I'm not getting to that right now. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So let's see if we retain. Right. We now need a ten up. Damn. Didn't get it. No. Uh, so we're gonna do evens for that one and odds for this one. Sorry, I should roll that in there. It's odds, so we're back over here. All right. So he. So, He's punching you, so why don't you roll your dice? I don't want to kill your leader for you. <laughs> All right. The Swarm Drone next to my leader is swinging. He has a combat value of six. Question, uh, he has a value of six because of the weapon he has? Correct. Yeah, okay. the, the, the bad, bad guys will often be armed with weapons. weapons. Yeah, it's basically, he's got a five, but then he's also got the nano stuff that makes his nano do nano, and then that's his weapon. Of course. Exactly. Yeah. It's very, nano, very, nano. It's very, yeah. very, it's very nano technical. It's nano all the way down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, we got six. We're looking for evens above the value of six. We got one. We got one. Uh, one eight. Um, that one's a little cocked. We roll it. Didn't get anything. We got seven. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I roll my uh, armor value, which is three. Looking for one even of any kind. Here we go. Got a six. So we are good. We got one even. That guy doesn't do anything. Your soldier's armor is just keep it. Or your soldier. Your leader's armor is just doing the work here today. It is wonderful. All right. Let's see if the bad guys retain. They do. Wait, do I need an even? No, you just need, need a six plus. Okay, so they go again. So that one in combat is the last close one mm -hmm. that needs yeah. to go. So uh, your guys are just getting punched. This is Operation Hind Behind Scott. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Scott guys just don't get punched. All right, I don't have armor on this guy, so any even will do. I have one six, I have one eight, so two net successes. Um, my engineer has a combat of three. So he needs two net successes. And boy, howdy, did I get three. Got three. Um, I am just, I'm, I'm, I'm on fire right now with my dice. Feels good, baby. Good, 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 good. All good, right, good. and can you retain three times in a row? You can. With a roll of a 12? With a roll of a 12. Well, this is only the second time. This is only the second time. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, my bad, okay. But you can, it just goes to a 12. Okay, if they not retain, we get to go. To go. I don't know what we want to do. Oh, well, I think I maybe get, get my engineer, engineer over here to go beep, boop, boop, beep, and get some energy weapons for us. Yes. Okay, so my engineer has a movement. Oh, first he's got to do his poison. Mm hmm. Got a six. I got one, two, three successes. Four successes. So he's good. Move four inches. I might not be able to get there. Can I see that? You can, I haven't asked this, but we've been doing it anyway. You can move over friendly. You can move through your friendly people, yes. You just can't stop on their base, of course. Okay. I'm very close. I don't know if that counts or not. Let's call it yes. Call it that we did. Okay, how do I make the technology? Ah, uh, so this is called swarm jamming. Okay. Uh, you're going to get ram jammed. So this is swarm jamming it. Uh, so if you move with... Swarm jamming it is the name of my next album. Absolutely. Uh, any crew member that moves within an inch of one of the fabricators can attempt to utilize the parts to build an improvised weapon to jam the signal that enables the swarm drones to maintain coherency. Building the jamming device requires an intelligence challenge test four, eight plus. So you need four successes off of your engineer's intelligence, which is five right here, with his, with his lab kit. Uh, however, only eight pluses are successes. This is a very complicated thing. Yeah. Now, uh, real, real quick, quick I'll, I'll say one more thing. thing. You'll notice in the book, when you look at this, that some things have keywords associated with them. For example, the toxic gas leak here in this room has the word chemical attached, whereas the swarm drones and the swarm jamming have alien technology. Sometimes some of your equipment will be better or worse, or some of your people will have skills or not against things like alien technology or uh, chemical stuff or viruses or you know, all these different things that exist in the game. So there can be different bonuses based on those. In this case, you don't, you do. If you make one of these checks, you're actually much better at this than he is, but uh, because you, your, your scientist is tooled up with like serious gear for uh, working with alien tech. Um, but at any rate, five dice, you're looking for evens, eight plus. Eights, tens, and twelves. That's a 12, that is it. I got one. One, you, have, you need uh, three more. To manufacture your first gun. Now, can it, do we? Does it have to be three more successes on this specific one, or yes. any of them? Three more on that one. But 
Keep in mind, with things, things like this that interact, I mean, just as you already inferred, multiple people can, can do this, right? So you can, yeah. you can just throw people together and they can all start humping the thing, trying to make it work, as it were. Okay? That was my strategy. I mean, you know, I'm not here to keep anyone's yum. So, yeah, and however you want to do it. Uh, we got to roll six up. We do not. Um, just that one duder over there. Who's closest? I believe the chief engineer is going to be the closest person to him. Okay. And he turns, moves within an inch, ish, ish. ish. All right. Looking for evens. Looking for evens. We got one even. Oh, no, that's an eight. We got two evens. All right. Mr. Engineer, man, I believe it's three, as per usual. Per usual. Two saves. You only got one, so he takes one point of damage. Yes, what was his total life? Uh, four, I think. Mm-hmm. He should be four. Yeah. Most, Most of the time, time uh, just so people understand, as, the, as you vary the crew sizes, sizes um, like, like move is a relatively stable, stable thing unless you're the commander or somebody who is specifically invested in it in some way. Um, life will be is set largely by the crew size, okay? Mm. And, and then the, the other skills, skills will somewhat move around a little bit. Mm. But, but like, like most people's move, move is pretty static. Like whether you have a bunch of dudes or a few dudes, everybody has the same legs. <laughs> so. Makes sense. Yes. Okay, so now because there are no swarm drones left to activate, I'm assuming uh, him and I just are gonna work it out. Correct. We'll pass work back it here. out. Okay. You could bring your all mm, words. You could <laughs> bring your engineer over and try to make some beep, 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 beep before we shoot more in case you can, can Get the technology under wraps. Absolutely. I, I pre-measured it. I'm not within an inch. I will move within an inch. You should make your life save. Uh, There's still toxic, toxic gas, gas in the room. All right. Uh, yes, four life. So I roll four dice. Looking for two evens. You got one, one. skis. Uh, He's joking. He's joking. Can't breathe. Okay. And now I'll make a check. And like you were saying earlier, my chief engineer has something. Uh, that helps him with this. And is it called? Is it called bypass? Uh, uh, yes, okay. it absolutely is. So, so here's, here's what's neat about, about the chief engineers. Chief engineers are again, they're, again, they're one of the veteran types. types. So, so they, they have, have like the super, super skill, skill working with technology, right? And that's what this is. Um, your chief engineer has a special ability called bypass. In addition to his ability to tool up weapons, what he can do is once per challenge when he makes a, a reaction or an intelligence. Uh, check which this is intelligence in this case intelligence or reaction challenge test he can say that target number is zero so whereas it's normally eight plus only your eight better counts for him it's zero now so so at that, that point any uh evens will count not just the eight up ones wonderful yeah exactly nice so okay. this is a mechanic you probably use throughout the game, then, a challenge value that's higher than just zero. Okay. Right, right. exactly. Okay. He effectively is like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to bypass this over to this. We're running, running the Samo flange into the Weevil Wazzle. <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, so he has a reaction and intelligence in both four, but in this case, am I using my intelligence skill? Yes, you are using your intelligence. All right, I'm trying to make a gun. I need four successes. Anything will do. I got three. Oh, that's a... That's an eight. Um, yes, I did get three. Uh, so one no, left. It's four. I thought it was more. more. No, no he, the, the, the scientist rolls a whole bunch. His chief engineer has uh, that. They're, they're both, both good. good. Yeah. So I need one more to pump a gun out of there, dude. You can do. All right. You guys are really good. Gun pumping. <laughs> All right, who's next? Don't be gross. <laughs> yeah, gotta be honest. I start it. Uh, is, well, who is his chief engineer? He doesn't have anybody that can get close this turn, right? His, his engineer, engineer is the, 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 the little guy right there. My right. scientist can get scientist over there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Scientist can go finish, finish it off. off. Should I do that? If you, if you can get, get within an inch, inch baby. Right. I will do that. Um, let's see. Well, let's see if I can do that first. So I have a move of five, or I uh, should say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not even over my model, and I'm definitely touching that thing. So I'll get right in there. And my. Um, it's not my medical officer, my scientist. You better roll for poison. Oh, yes, my word. What is wrong with me, chat? I can't figure this out. Um, speaking of chat, I've been, I'm sorry, I've been neglecting you. Uh, Arcalid, Wonkelbonk, and Overvox, wonderful names. Thank you for the subs, I appreciate it. And also thank you for the bits. Dr. Three saying, from Columbus, Ohio, hope the games are good. 
Alright, so... Shout out to Wonkobong. This is the poison gas test. Oh, your poison gas test. Poison gas! Poison gas! We're good, I got 2 and 12. Okay. Now, his intelligence. Your scientist uh, stole all the gear from your crew. I just loaded that dude up, so, because it was funny to me to give him a bunch of equipment. Uh, so, he has all the stuff he needs. <laughs> I just picture him just carrying a bunch of stuff that's all clanking together as he's trying to go through the space station. Yeah. So, so at anyway, any rate, he has an intelligence of seven for this check. Uh, so, he's, he's in a good place. Uh, and you need, he will roll against the eight plus because he's not the engineer doing the bypass. So, you need, at this point, one die. It is A plus. Okay. It's like Samwise Gamgee with all his pans and pots. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wait, wait. I see an eight. I see an eight. I see two eights. All right. Wait, wait, should I, I keep track of how many guesses there are? Do we go over? Yeah, you can keep going. Okay, these, this was cocked. Reroll it. All right, we got two eights, so just two successes. Okay. So, so basically, basically you're, you're, you're one point into manufacturing a second weapon, if you want, being the point. All right, because you can, you can replicate it multiple times. Uh, so now your engineer is now armed with a swarm jammer. Okay, uh, a swarm jammer is a weapon, ranged, energy. It utilizes intelligence instead of combat. If the challenge test is successful, the enemy swarm drone is immediately out of action and removed from play. One shot, one kill. You just got to oh, beat him by we'll, one number. We'll we'll signify that by a little flame token because mm -hmm. he's got the flamer. So that, that's, that is, that's like the greatest it. guy to have this thing. Correct, because he's very smart. Oh. <laughs> Awesome. Smart people make it, smart people use it. It's a smart people gun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Love that. Um, all right. Um, so can... they're all done. So do you want to go again with just that guy over there? Or sure. oh, I can move. Or, or you can go with your healer and heal up your big dude. Um, yeah. I don't know if it necessarily matters, but I think what I'll I think what I'll do is I'll move this person closer to this mob if oh, I can. Sure. Um, just to Oh yeah, I got the move for it. I'll go base to base. There you go. Ace mm. pilot, get in there. Whoa! Get in there. Yeah. Okay. okay. What is Boys wrong again. with me, dude? It's okay. All right, that's cocked. All right, I got an eight to twelve, so we're good on poison gas. Regan asks, you mentioned UK printing earlier. Do I order from the main site to receive UK shipping, or is there an affiliate? Basically, when you order from the the site. Um, you know, if you go to our site over at spacestationzerogame.com and you click on it and say, I want to buy the printed version and also get the PDF, it'll take you to Wargame Vault. And when you put in your shipping address, it will figure out which facility automatically to send it to, and then they'll mail it to you from there. So, yeah. You don't have to worry about nope, that. Nope, nope, nope. It takes care of it. Makes it, it uses whichever one's going to get it to you faster. Yeah. And I, just because I don't think we said it right now, it's uh, it's 13 bucks for the, the PDF alone and 18 bucks for the book, the printed book, plus, plus the PDF, plus shipping. And you get the PDF, yep, exactly. That's very reasonable. Yeah. We are reasonable then. That's right. That's the goal. We <laughs> wanted reasonable. to make sure, like, I don't, yeah, it's whatever. Yeah. I, I want to make sure the most people can play it as possible. We worked hard on it. I want to see people play in F1. That's, mm -hmm. that's what the point is. Oh, Which, speaking of, if you're in Twitch chat, exclamation mark SSZ will get you to that link to pick up a copy if you want. Um, if you're not in Twitch chat and you're watching on Vinch channel, the website is spacestationzerogame.com. Yeah. And also, if you're watching the stream and you're enjoying it, consider supporting us. If you are an Amazon Prime member, you can connect your Amazon Prime to Twitch to sub to one channel for free every single month. And you don't want to have that money go into Bezos' pockets, right? You want, it, you want it to go into our pockets, right? You want to spend those Bezos bucks with the people that you want to spend them with. Exactly, which yeah. is definitely us, right? Come on, right? Um, so, yeah. Uh, all right. I'm making a combat check against uh, the guy that I'm base to base with for, sorry, with my ace pilot. Looking for evens. I can reroll one, one. Didn't get any, but I did get two evens. Um, so, he rolls his defense with uh, the same five dice. Also looking for evens. And he got one so far, uh, just one, so reduces to one, and then it rounds down, so zero. Yep. Okay. Hey, shout out to Davos the Brute taking your advice, subscribing with Prime. And random dude paints, random dude 13 paints minis. Appreciate the support, guys. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. That was that guy's activation. Um, do you want me to send my healer over there? Yeah. I mean, I your think, healer here? Yes, I think we should split up the healers for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to double move with my medic. First, I got to do a life check. Mm -hmm. 
He can remember. <laughs> I did make it. Yeah, yeah, you did. Three successes. Just checking for another one because I rolled one, one. Mm. One, one, one. Uh, move a four so I can move eight inches. There, and that's his activation. We still have you got one soldier and your healer, and I think that's. Oh, is your big dude gone yet? Nope. Okay. Um, now remember, Vince is trying to get us to do this rule that he could show us that in melee combat, if we messed up, they would hurt <laughs> us back. So your healer is in melee com- or your leader's in melee combat, and he's at two health. Maybe heal him first. Um, that's a great idea. <laughs> I say swim first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll listen to whatever voice that was. Maybe the the strategy gods in the sky. Um, yeah. yeah, for fun, let's swing. Um, okay, so the commander is going to go. Um, he has a combat value of five, just like everybody else. Um, right? There's nothing special about him, right? Nope, nothing special about your commander in combat. It's uh, tough, but nothing special about his combat. He's going to swing at the right swarm drone. Um, oh, I remember. Mm-hmm. Poison gas check. Uh, we got two evens, a six and a two and a twelve. A three. Yeah. Um, okay. Swing. We are getting a two twelves, baby. Yeah. Screw your rules. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's two net six, actually three, a 12, 12, and a four. So total six. Yep. So right. two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So then he has five on the defense, and you're looking at uh, six total damage because of your crit. Okay. A little bit more evens. An eight and a 10, so minus two. So four damage for that right swarm drone. And then half. Half. So two. So he's down, they had six total health, right? They have yeah. seven total health. Oh. What? Correct. This one's down to five. And maybe, maybe I will, I don't know, this is smart, but I'll just swing around and go base to base with these two chumps. Um, okay. Just make sure you did want to heal him with your oh medical my gosh. officer, yes, so make yes, sure you yes, stay yes, within yes, range. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> maybe sometimes you don't gotta unnecessarily move, you know? Good mention. <laughs> <laughs> the doctors come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to save your life. This is the classic thing in like in video games, and you line of sight your healer, and it's just like, what do you do? You want to die? It's just like, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Uh, do you have any guys left that you want to go with? I don't think I have any guys left. Period. Uh, okay. So you just have these two left. Okay. Uh, I will swing this way, stay within an inch, form a little conga line here. Um, and I will shoot at the one in base to base with my ace pilot. Okay, you got the you got the big you got the big gun over there though. You think I should? Oh, oh with your pilot? No, the, with, I'd rather shoot the ones with the helix. We don't have the technology yet over here. He's gonna just like melt the size those. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. I will swing this way then, and I'll shoot at the one that is wounded. You know, within one inch of his bro, his soldier bro. Um, with a sidearm, they have a combat of six. Um, shooting the wounded one. Nope. Poison gas. There it is. He got there. I got there. Um, it nailed him. <laughs> only one success, so I take one damage from the two damage test. Um, we got some more uh, subs. Uh, Durft and LPP Steve, thank you for the prime subs. We appreciate it. Um, awesome. Okay, so swing at this wounded guy. Looking for evens. I got a four and an eight, so two successes. And I can re-roll three of these, right? That's correct. Two for combat specialists and one for harmonious. You got it. That's going to go away. That's going to stay there. Reroll these ones. And I got two more. So six net successes for my uh, soldier. Uh, defense roll for the swarm drone. Was it six or four? Oh. Was four. four total. Yes, four total. I'm, I'm, my apologies. Um, and two successes, so that is one total damage. It was, the difference was two, and they reduced by half. You get a damage on. You're working them down. You're working them down. I don't, I don't need a special nano bot jammer gun. I'll just good. brute force it. Brute force. <laughs> I think the last one is your medical officer, who is uh, probably going to try to heal. Yes. Uh, but of course, there's something that has to happen before she goes to heal. So what could that thing be? I can't wait for you to turn that van open. 
Um, I got two tens, so we are good. As long as you don't have two ones, you're good. Yes, I am. I am forgetting about that. That with a skill check, a double one is always going to make you fail. Yeah, that's you got to watch out for that with saves because saves. If you roll the double one, it will like turn. You're like, oh, I got a million successes. Oh, but wait. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I uh, like that. Okay. I'm a genius. Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> Uh, so this is your medical attention check. So remember, this is intelligence. Uh, your medical officer is very good at this. So she has a skill of, I believe, seven for this off the top of my head. Yep, I'm right. That's the max. Uh, so you're rolling, looking for uh, evens. There's are six plus. We got a 12 and an eight, a, and a six, and another eight. So four successes. So she heals four damage back onto your leader, which I think puts you back to... Life total is six. Puts it's you back to full life. That perfect heal. So I have a question for you, Vince. I am playing the the squad with more dudes in it, so one, one would think that my individual guys are worse, but it feels like I'm performing better. Am I just rolling hot, or is something going on here with the gear? No, so, uh, yeah, it's a great question. So John's base stats are higher than yours, okay, uh, by, in some points. You, I gave you a couple. You have a different gear set. You're more kitted into, you're kitted into science and engineering, into like intelligence and reaction and that kind of thing, to feed with, to feed with like defeating things like the obstacles. The pirate crew is kitted into a bunch of heavy weapons and like big guns and stuff like that, and kitted into a more combat oriented crew. When you're going co-op, it kind of makes sense then. I, I designed them to be kind of balances to each other, right? Where he is very scary in melee and at going through, like carving his way through enemies. You're very efficient at uh, handling obstacles because you have a bunch of gear that's improving. Even though your base number's lower, your gear is carrying you up over. Okay. Remember, that we played sense. two rounds and my scariest guy is my leader who has done zero attacks in two rounds because he's going over there to try to turn that off. So in hindsight, maybe if I, if I, you know, maybe that wasn't a smart move, but it's still fun. Yeah. yeah. One of the keys is that gear is a very limited resource. Um, you do not get a lot of gear uh, in this game uh, unless you're like, uh, there, unless you build completely into that option with your edge and everything. Uh, and that's intentional. You have to make a choice about the kinds of things you want your crew to be able to handle better than average. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. Um, someone said that I rolled double ones, I believe was on my most recent uh, noxious fumes or, or that, that test for my engineer. And so I will take two damage on my medical officer. Um, because I want to play this game, you know, accurately. Two damage. Thanks for uh, thanks for calling me out, chat. I appreciate it. <laughs> it was two tens and two ones. I thought it was. Thank you, chat. Yeah. I could kind of look from here, and it looked like that was the one face. But I was like, I don't trust him. Eagle eye. Well, okay, so what do I? The medical have to do? officer should suffer two damage because the two ones would mean she failed her save. So I have two wounds remaining. Yes. So she healed the leader up to full, but ouch. <laughs> she poisoned. <laughs> She's got the black lung. <laughs> 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 Was that the last activation? That was that the last is. activation. All right, so that puts us now into turn number three. Oh, I should probably like set up the button for that, huh? Yeah, maybe. Or not. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, good round so far. We got access to one of these things. So let's uh, kick it. Uh, kick it. Oh, that is. Oh, wow. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. It's there. Look at it. Shh, shh. Nobody look. Perfect. Now you can look. All right, turn number three. You want me to go turn the thing off? I feel like I'm, I'm pretty invested. Can someone else do it? And turning the, sh the shit off. Uh, no, is the answer. Maybe, okay, yeah. I mean, the only one that can move that far yeah. and still do an action. Okay. And that way it just clears us up for the rest of our activations. Sure. I have one success left to get on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first my leader is, he's like, I didn't go to fight school for 12 years <laughs> to turn a goddamn knob. Punch the knob. But here I am. <laughs> yes, punch the knob. Barbarian <laughs> solution. This, uh, this is his life. Jack because of poison. Yep, yep. Oh, uh, one, two, three, four successes. It's the same eight inches to get back here. And then I'm rolling four dice because he's not exactly reaction oriented. He's more action oriented. Mm. <laughs> 
Um, and I'm looking for a what? Just evens or? Uh, this is just evens. It's just evens. It's not, there's no. Uh, I got two. I got two. <sighs> okay. Look, well, breathe now. Oh my gosh. <sighs> the vent activates and draws all of the toxic poison gas from the room. I'll take just a quick second here to talk about the difference between uh, challenges like that that don't have a target number and challenges like making the gun, which do. That's not a random thing. There's a philosophy behind that in the game. What I mean there is the target number is meant to show not just that you need a lot of work, but complexity. The example we give in the game is write 20,000 words. Like imagine sitting down to a computer and writing 20,000 words. That just has a, a success number of a certain height, right? Because you have to sit there and keep typing and typing and typing and typing and typing. It takes mm -hmm. a while. There's nothing complicated about it, especially if you don't care what the words are. Yeah, A. Hey. Right? Exactly. Just spamming that thing. Just spamming it. But a target number is write a 20,000 word award winning short story. Okay? That has a high target number because there's a complexity to that. You have to have skill to do that. Mm -hmm. So the things in the game like manufacturing a gun from random alien technology that insta kills them has a certain level of complexity to it. And I'm assuming where the stats come in is the difference between me trying to paint an award winning miniature and you trying to paint an award winning miniature. Exactly. That's that's right. That's right. Do we keep control? We do. And by that I mean it's much easier for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So we get to keep control. I kind of mark your little activation guy. Oh, thanks. Um, Scott, I kind of want you to use that energy weapon to just melt somebody. I thought you'd never ask. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm here for. my mad scientist. Um, is going to wield his new alien tech. He uses his intelligence value because it's a smart gun for smart people. Yeah, so his base intelligence for this, because uh, of his, he's not, uh, what he's doing here, uh, this is utilizing alien technology, so he's ripping the full bonus out, baby. This is rolling seven dice. God damn! And uh, I'm looking for... Any evens. Any evens. It's just, it's, Straight damage. He's yeah. making, think of this like he's making a combat, but he gets to use his brain now to do it. Ooh. Can you target anybody? Target Who should I target, John? Oh. I don't know. I don't know if you can see the ones over there. Yeah, I don't think you can see the ones over on that side. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I will do it to that guy. Oh wait, yeah, sure. Why not that? Guy. No, no, that guy. Okay. Um, no, no test. You didn't have to life save. The vent <sighs> has cleared the room. You can breathe. Uh, thank God. The air is clear. All right, we're looking for evens. No double ones. Okay, I got a two. An eight, a two. So three straight up damage. Okay. Now, here's the super fun part. You ready for this? This is an intelligence challenge test. This is the important part about this. This gun fires an intelligence challenge test. It doesn't fire a combat challenge test. So the swarm drone now cannot use his combat to defend against this. He has to use his intelligence, which is two. Hey. Oh no, oh no. Instead of five. One before I rolled two twelves. All right, here we go. It didn't happen. I did roll one six, however, um, so he takes a net of two damage. Well, he takes a net of dead, because with this weapon, if you beat them, if even one point goes through, you're melting. They may melt him. So now, yes, it's his... you discorporate it, right? You 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 kill its ability to maintain coherency as oh, a swarm, and it just falls, and it apart. Just falls yeah, apart. Okay. Is that a one-time use weapon? Nope. Oh gosh, I just machine gun that. Um, That's my go. Does damage transfer? If your guy ends this battle at not full health, does that transfer over to the start of the next mission? No. Okay. Health, does, like regular damage will heal. Okay. Um, oh, we got to roll to see if we keep. It's when you get, say, knocked out, you know, you're out of action. And that's when you have the like injury and death kind of charge and everything like that in the between games. Charts. Mm -hmm. I just need a 10 plus there, Scooty Pooty. Scooty Pooty. That's a 10. He delivers! Um, I kind of feel like our next best shot here to kill one is this guy can maybe activate this, but he can't also shoot it in the same round. But maybe I get a good shot with my current dude against the one that's taking some damage. So let's do that. I want to shoot. I want to shoot some things with my ace pilot. He's rolling seven dice. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, because his weapon's been tuned. Yeah, thank you for reminding me that every time. Mm -hmm. You're good. Um, I can reroll a single roll of one. 
Oh, well, that is a one. Eight dice. I don't know if it's gonna matter because I only roll one, two, three successes. And then he rolls five dice on defense, and he rolls one success. So he takes two damage. Yes, because that is an energy weapon. He has no resistance against it. I cut him in half. I killed half of the robots. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Um, okay, he is gone now. Um, now I need to roll a twelve. Retain again. Yes, he needs a twelve. No whammies. No, nope. we got a whammies. Uh, so then we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. On who activates, it's going to be the one up there on Great Facts. All right. Um, hit my ace pilot with six dice. Looking for evens. Got three. Okay. One. All right. Great. Uh, the pilot, pilot, right? The ace pilot's got yep. life value of four. Uh, it's combat. You're rolling to defend yourself. That's so combat of three. Okay. I think I might have moved that die, so I'm just going to roll again. Sorry. Three dice. I'm an idiot. Third time's the charm. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. I got one even. Uh, so that would be, I can't remember what I rolled, honestly, before. <laughs> three. You, you took you threw, yours three on, so you just produce it by one. So she takes two damage. Okay. Now to two. And then do the bad guys retain. Do they retain? They do retain. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here. Okay. They did retain, but I'll mention this thing that your commander has. Since you're a pirate commander, you have an ability called Sneaky Scoundrel. And once a game, when the enemy rolls to retain initiative, you can force them to re-roll it. I feel like now's as good a time as any. Reroll that dice. Roll that dice. That's a twelve. Okay. That's not better. He's over there sucking out the last of the poison gas. <laughs> Huff and paint, huff and paint <laughs> cans. <laughs> um, all right, so evens is the left one. Mm-hmm. Uh, evens is is, so that one's gonna go. Scott, your leader is getting punch-a-sized for free right now. All right, armor of six on this big tanky boy. So looking for evens over six. I got two tens and, a, and two fours, so only two net go through for now. The amount of damage that armor has negated. Yeah. It is. Wonderful. He has a combat value of three. So I'm looking to beat two. And I do with two twos, two net successes. So no damage taken. All right. Roll to, to keep initiative for baddies. No dice. No dice. All right, Scott. Who do you want to go with? Your uh, scary yep. ch- combat guy hasn't gone yet, right? You want him to punch his size? Oh, yeah. He hasn't even activated yet. Dude, kill that man. Yeah, okay. Or not man, swarm drone. Mm-hmm. Okay, he only man shaped cloud. Kill that man shaped cloud, <laughs> tiny robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't roll off the tongue, it's not really. Yeah, it's not as easy. Uh, he rolls eight. Mm-hmm. And a tennis racket is back. I can reroll two dice. I'd like a crit here. Uh, reroll that one. Oh, get a 12, get a 12. Give me that 12, Z's. So that is a two, a four, a three. All right, so that turns it into eight successes. Mm-hmm. Um, eight successes with one, one uh, success on the defense. So that makes it seven. Seven cut in half, rounded down is still three damage. He has two life remaining. And look, Monica Sellers is, is back at it again. Hold on, what did you do with the, did you do the sound? <laughs> Joffrey, there is no gas remaining. Uh, John heroically opened the valve with his best character for three rounds in a row. So he's really, <laughs> he's really doing his silent here. The, the, you know, Dread Pirate Roberts <laughs> did not shoot one time. <laughs> Sometimes um, it's about the shots that you don't take. Yeah. 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 Great life lesson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, the real friends are the shots we made along the way. Okay. <laughs> We get to keeps. We get to keeps. Uh, we, I want you to do something. All right. Um, I think 
my big old commander there is really getting sick of just getting smacked a little bit. So he is going to hit back. You guys have both chosen to lose, use your leaders in very interesting ways in this. Like one is just a little mobile thing who turns a wheel and the other one's a punching bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rough being in charge, I guess. Yeah. Come on, these guys have never played miniature war games before. They don't know how this works. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, no, no, no gas test. Looking for evens. Eight, 12, 10. That is a one out of four. So four net successes. Um, a defense roll with five dice. Looking at two, six, two. Uh, so no damage. There's only one remaining reduced to half is zero. Math. Get that 10 up, Scotty, so we can keep this tr good train of rolling. Nope. No, <laughs> uh, but it doesn't matter because I killed the only guy that they had left not to activate. Correct. Get a gun for yourself there, Johnny boy. Okay. 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 This guy needs to do the thing. All right. Um, <laughs> I am doing an int check. Mm -hmm. This is my engineer. Yep. And so I'm just rolling fives, looking, f looking for what eight ups. Mm -hmm. Oh God. He's smart, but not that smart. Yes. I got two. Done. You get one toward the next one. Yes, you. No, I had three left. Oh. Feels bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, old. <laughs> um, he so is close. gone. So he, he's gone. Um, you want to have your, like, healer heal himself? Yes. Wrap himself up there. Um, yeah, I don't think I really need to move. Or, or you can sh just shoot because we have him tied up, kind of. Yeah, and that guy ain't dying. That's, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'll just shoot. Uh, Met officer also has a sidearm, so combat value five. Uh, no notch gas. Looking for evens. I got a two sixes, one eight. All right, three. And then armor. Nothing. One. Oh, one. one. So he still takes a damage. One damage. Down to six. Hey, one damage is a victory. Yeah, so I'll answer the question. Sam Cast said, how's it a uh, question? Can we use D6s instead of D12s? And, and the answer is really no. The game is designed around the D12. And like in this particular one, a lot of it's happening on evens and odds. But understand in certain challenges, there's things that happen on a five or a seven or a nine. Like we're using every face on the D12 to play with odds in certain challenges. And like that's setting the odds of crit at a certain level and the odds of crit failure or success. Like there are, we, even though your normal, challenge roll is evens and odds and so you would think like okay well i could do the same thing with a d6 and have roughly the same chance because it's just half and half right there are a lot of other activities going on throughout the scope of the game that play with hitting a certain number right right you also can't roll a critical one on 2d6 so there is no rolling of a one which is kind of a big deal. Yeah, even if you're just rolling all the d6s individually. Like, if you just shrunk the die down, you, would, you wouldn't have the same odds thing. Certainly, yes. bridging it where you create a pyramid is going to be very different. I mean, yes. come on. You can play D&D &D using a d6 instead of a d20. It's fun. <laughs> Nothing changes. Yeah. Sometimes the dice, the dice. But they, you can get bulk d12s off Amazon. Or yeah. uh, or go to the... If you're, if you're in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, maybe head over to the Source Comics mm -hmm. and Games, an amazing game store that has giant buckets, buckets of d12s. This is true. I am going to do go with my medical officer and heal the person that's face to face there, so they don't die. It's great facts over there. So I'm doing an intelligence check. Um, five. I need a six plus. I get one, two, two six pluses. Holy heal! Jesus Christ, save you! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boom! You're healed. Um, yeah, Scott, why don't you shoot? One of your soldier, soldiers, your, win your winter soldiers. Ah, oh, shall. All right, we'll shoot the wounded guy. Um, I am next to my other brethren. Can re-roll three of my dice because of that harmonious benefit, and I have six to roll. Let's do it. Looking for evens. I got a couple. I got a lot. I got four. Um, so I take those out. Reroll these two for combat specialists. Didn't get any more. Never re-roll a re-roll in this game? Can't re can't ever re-roll a re-roll. Okay. Yeah, okay. No triple stamp, a double stamp. <laughs> uh, two to my four, so one damage. Rounded down. So, so right. one. Still one. Yes. Oh. He, he already did the math. 
Well, he did three damage. They saved two. He did four. Oh, you did four. Okay, I can't. You already got a dime. It's Saturday. Oh, you're doing that one. Okay. Yeah, because oh, exactly. I have the alien tech over here. I figured yeah, you can blast you're, them. You're smart. All right. Why don't you bring his, 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 other, his other bro? Yes. I think that's our last one to go. Or no, you're your your guy over there. Yeah, I think my whatever engineer. that guy is, engineer. Yeah, I'm not gonna move with base to base, but I'm gonna swing. Uh, I think everyone's got fives. Um, look for evens. Two. Nope. He is fine with a defense roll of two successes, and then lastly, my ace pilot. Um, Oh, this this guy hasn't gone either. No, I, I definitely shot with that guy. Oh, you shot with this guy. Um, maybe you shot with both. I don't. I'm know. pretty sure I already shot with the comment, the other specialist, didn't I? Yes, you did. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, last one. Okay. Gray factor. We roll ones. Oh, there's a one. Twelve. Dang it. Um, two net successes and the swarm drones defense save. There's some caps out of the box. Um. Only 112. So I guess if you ever, okay, yeah, yeah. So no damage, because it was difference of one, rounded down is zero. Okay, um, is that everyone in turn three? Yeah. All we're right. Getting, we're getting a little, a little bit more efficient, it feels like. We are, and so with that, we will now clean off the board and move on to round number four. Final round. What happens if round four happens and we haven't won yet? We just die? You all die. No, I mean, it's just weird. we just set this one in four rounds because that's how many little turn icons we have. Each challenge has a different number of set number of rounds based on the whatever's going on in that challenge. Okay. I think the Dread Pirate Roberts needs to hit something. He needs to do something with his life? He needs to go and hit something, please. Okay. I mean, if he doesn't, you're going to be like, why are you actually the boss? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, know, okay. right? that's you, know, you don't want that. You don't want that. <laughs> All right. So first thing he's going to do... Gonna measure. I can't get over. I want to get like on top of the the garage. I can't get that far, but I can get right here and shoot down on this guy. I feel like I want to get on top of the garage. It's a very Minnesota statement. Yeah. I want to get on top of the garage. Okay. So combat roll of eight, mm -hmm. and once a turn, when an opponent rolls to retain. That's your sneaky. Blah 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 blah. So that's it. I don't have any re rolls or anything. Nope. Four eight. Okay. All righty. That's a bingo. We got two 12s and a total of one, two, three, four, five successes. That's 10 zos, baby. Mm -hmm. All right. 10 minus one, two, three, four. That still kills him. Oh, no, it doesn't because he has half. Oh, four was down to six. Half of six is three. He's down to two life. Although, taking off three damage without having the energy weapon, I feel like... It's nothing to sneak at. Yeah, he, he kind of, like, re... Like, he re-got all of the, like, the clout from all the other pirates. They're like, what's the captain doing this whole time? Damn middle managers. All they do, they check emails, come out and yell at us every hour. Oh, he shot somebody. We're good. Um, all right, I got to roll a six up. I do not... Right. All right, Will, thanks for the prime sub. We have a question from Joffrey. What happens if you uh, haven't completed all the tasks by the end of the turn? Uh, is it just, are we just trying to survive here, or? Yeah, you're trying to survive. In this case, this challenge will actually go until it's completed. Like, this one doesn't actually have a round end. We set it to four turns just because we've had so many screen transitions we had and how much time we had, basically, to do this. Um, but some, many challenges will have an end point where, like, at the end of turn four, the bomb goes off, and if you ain't fixed it, you are now space dust. Cut the red wire. Yeah. Oh no, MacGyver. So the uh, it's gonna be that one. Mm -hmm. Using no. his intelligence to fight, which is seven. No, 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 no. Oh, it's bad guys. Oh, the bad guys. Initiative. Okay, okay. And they have initiative of six. Uh, six, yes. Comma six. Sorry. One, two, three, four. Four successes. Yikes, bruh. All right, we got a life, or sorry, a combat of three. Dude, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna die. Boy, I might die. Oh you know. no, I just took three damage. Am I dead? Wait, wait, wait. Why would you take three? Because I got one even. This is a six, that's a 12. Oh, okay. I take two damage then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> do, the, 
Yeah. So just real quick, right there, you can see what the how good it is to have the medical officers, right? Because yeah. even though they're not the best combatants, she was at two a second ago. Yeah. You healed her. She went back to two. She would have been. Look at our strategy of splitting up the healers for each sub party. Did you and retain? Did not. I could have. I would have used my guy's dude reroll there too if they would have. Um, why don't you melt a size that guy over there? I'm gonna melt a size the guy who hasn't. Oh, I can't. Oh, wait, can I move and then shoot? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Well, you, you do that one. Yeah, but what about the guy who hasn't acted? Oh, hasn't yet? acted. Well, then maybe you have my super my super rifle. Go. Do it. Blast I mean, you know away. What? No, I think. Serena Williams, she started this thing and has killed two of these things. She's coming in. Wait, do you have enough move to move toward the pylon, like run up the wall, yes. and then backflip off of it, landing on top of the swarm drone? Yeah, it just like spiked the tennis racket. Okay, yeah. On this, on You're just head. bringing it down through the whole cloud right now. Eight, eight dice. No, seven. No, eight dice. And I can reroll two. Give me some twelves. I just rolled terrible. He's a fuck. Think that. Three, three, four, four successes. Someone asked, "Is this a PVE game?" It is both, but I think the heart of the game probably is PVE. What is three ones on the yeah, defense roll? Uh, crit failure, so no successes at all. Ooh. She's three for three. Ah! <laughs> Boom. This is what we learned. The Space Marine miniatures are better in any game. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. true, though. We've killed five monsters. She's killed three of the five. Every turn. Uh, that tennis racket of energy is great. And then your roll to retain. Uh, got him. Let's send this. Let us, let us melt them. The smart gun. With your brain. Here it comes. Seven dice, because I have an intelligence value of seven. I need evens. I got. Uh, That's two ones, bro. Oh no! Oh no! Okay. And you didn't go stand next to one of your people before you shot. Would you maybe have liked to slightly move so you were within one inch of one of your people? We're just gonna. Okay. There you go. Which means you can you can pick one die and re-roll it, namely the one one. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just melt his own brain? Yeah. yeah maybe. Hey, Vince. This is like I think this game sucks. He just rolled a one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. His, his experimental technology failed this round. Yeah, yeah, it's jamming. He's like, oh, oh, God, oh, no. Um, all right. It clearly says experimental right on the label. Yeah, like that's part of that. You're going to have to do process. this the old fashioned way then, whereas everybody, get him. Yeah. This guy ain't dying, dude. Not, this guy hasn't gone yet. Oh, yeah. Crack that, that guy. That guy hasn't been hit. Um, yeah, he's got his full seven wounds remaining. Uh, We've got activation on Brainiac over there. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, well, first, I'll just have my my brain guy go here. He rolls four dice for my, my engineer. Guy. He's just looking for evens? Or is this the eight plus? This is for, what are you, what are you doing? This guy's got one more oh, success on this. Oh, checking on that? Uh, yes, this is your engineer, so he's... Uh, I got two. Uh, he's actually on five dice, but you're still good. It's eight plus, yes. Okay. Fire weapon activated. All right, then then this guy's going to go. He's just going to shoot. And he's doing all the bad guys. Now you just guys are just resolving. Let's see, can you kill this guy this by guy, the end of four? I, the completely arbitrary thing we've set up as a target for this. Eight dice, because I remind, finally remembered, and he gets... He can reroll a roll of one. Reroll a onesie. Uh, there's a onesie. And so I got one, two, three, four, four. Four successes. All right, roll really badly, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, two, three. Nope, nothing. <laughs> no, because it's an energy weapon. Yeah, so oh, does, four and three still, still does take one. Oh, crap. Okay. Uh, All right. I'll have my two soldiers just go next because I think they're the most combat effective. Oh, we have to, yeah, we're not rolling to retain anymore. Yeah, right. to retain. All the bad guys are gone. P, P break for John while Scott takes his turn. I am going to mute my mic. All right. No one wants to hear John P, except for me. <laughs> Did All you right. mute your mic? Check, 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 check. Uh, just yeah. mute him. Uh, All okay. right. Here we go. Soldier numero uno. Looking for evens. Um, 
Got 12, 1, 6. Okay, so. And don't forget, you can reroll up to three dice because he's they're standing next to each other, helping each other out. Yeah, I did get two ones. That is a crit failure. Um, so I will uh, choose to reroll because of Combat Specialist and Harmonious. Um, I got uh, three net successes. Um, so the guys will have a save. Um, if I get any more than one, it does no damage. I, yes. <laughs> it does no damage. <laughs> uh, real quick, somebody asked, does it also have PvE VP? And basically, like, where you're also fight, where you're fighting against each other and the environment? And the answer is yes. In some of the skirmish challenges uh, that are in the book, there are six different skirmish challenges in the book, head-to-head -head, uh, challenges. Uh, and those also, uh, some of those do have NPC enemies, like AI enemies in them as well. So you're, it's all a big mess. John was asking before, though, about could he, if he was feeling sassy, just start shooting at Scott's guys? Not generally within the narrative. You're, you're friendly. Yeah. He is pretty sassy, though. So. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah, you can mouth off each other, but you understand the, the, the seriousness of the situation. Yeah. All right, soldier number two is going. Um, six combat value, six dice. That's a miss. Well, goodbye, die. Um, <laughs> That's a nine. So I only got one success, but I do get to reroll three of these. Um, and I got three net successes. Mike, back on. And now I am looking for an armor save. Anything more than two will uh, double once. Uh, oh. No, 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 no. That's a seven. That's a seven. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, uh, but I only got one success. Um, and so I do one damage mm -hmm. after the half reduction. Go from six to five. All right, both my soldiers went, and I did one damage. <laughs> you want to get in there and just? You know it? how much getting in there I have able to be doing. Dooby dooby do. Um, don't you have is your heat leader good at killing stuff or no? I think nope. It's the exact same as the rest. Um, let's keep. Moving. What about your engineer right there? They're all kind of the same, um, so I can just keep rolling. Just keep keep going. You just, just pile it on. Just jump and get him, guys. <laughs> all right, here comes the engineer. Um, two net successes. We could get a, you know, could get a straight crit in here. Who knows? Yeah. Defense value. Uh, only one, so it doesn't matter. Round down to half. No damage done. Um, Grayfax or my ace pilot hasn't gone yet. Same deal. Can we roll ones? Didn't get any two evens. Um, no, three evens. That's an eight. Um, anything more than one even will do nothing. Okay. Got a six and an eight. So nothing happens with my ace pilot. Um, there is a medic over there. Uh, yeah, your medic is over there. Well, your medic. Do you have him attack? Swing? Yes, please. Uh, combat medical officer. Why is there a seven? Because the medical officer has a combat of seven. Wow. Because everybody officer. in the pirate crew, I told you, yours is kitted for combat. Everybody in there has giant guns. All right. Like ridiculous let's, guns. Let's, let's get them. Give me, give me some 12s, 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 12s. Yes. Two 12s. Uh, one, two, three successes is all, but that turns into six. Uh huh. And then six uh, minus. Three is one damage. Ouch. So it's from five to four. John's great rolling betrays him yet again. Yes. <laughs> Their defenses. Gotcha. And I think you have your medical officer and your leader left to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you move them vaguely four inches toward the remaining guy? They both have the exact same combat value, so I'll just roll them. Now, don't forget, you'll still benefit from your harmonious culture here. It's not just your soldiers. So you can reroll one die because they're all going to be within an inch of each other when they, they make this show. Do that? Everybody used to do that. Uh, oh, that's nice. Literally anybody. Oh, sorry. It's, I, I was, that's what I told you earlier. It's, it's okay. okay. For some reason, I thought it was like only for my soldiers. I don't know why. Nope. Um, okay. We got literally nothing. Um, so I'm not even going to bother rerolling because it won't matter <laughs> if I get one success. <laughs> uh, all right. And my leader. Um, 12. That's a 12. That's a pretty, that's a 9. Roll one die. Roll one die. Oh. So, th uh, just two. No, three. 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 Um, and then the defense roll. Um, he's totally fine. <laughs> Four. Uh, 
So I don't know if you wanted to. So that thing only happened in melee because he got more defense than I actually produced hits for. Oh yay! Who did that? Uh, the leader actually. Oh, but you're far away. It's not a melee. Okay. 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 Darn. All right. So that actually is everybody. We weren't able to kill this guy, so we could go to a turn five. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, we we can we can. I I feel like you guys get the the gist, and we can call it here. You'll activate, yeah. shoot what, your guy. What is the thing you were trying to get? Off. Yeah, I'll talk about it. So, like, because you would go to turn five and activate your intelligence uh, brain melter guy, and hopefully this time not roll two ones. So you guys would certainly be victorious. You've turned off the, the toxic gas. You know, the, the challenge would pretty logically end pretty fast here. Um, we won't belabor the point too much with it. Uh, yeah, so you guys didn't lose anyone. Great job. You used your medical officers well. Let me talk about how the close thing works. So here's how it works. When you make a close attack, and a close attack just means you make the attack within one inch of another of your enemy, okay? Gun or sword, it's irrelevant. If the defender ever gets more successes than the attacker, it's damaged back onto you. It flips it. So however many more successes they got goes back on you, okay? So you can actually like, I mean, you try to shoot somebody with a gun in melee who's got a big giant sword, they can pretty easily turn that around and stab you because you're exposing yourself in, in close combat. Okay? Like that. That's awesome. But it doesn't require a bunch of extra rolls every time you're in yeah, it's just It's just the straight difference between the two. And so, like, your soldier is kitted for that because she has the giant weapon mm -hmm. uh, that actually works on her combat score in uh, when making defense rolls. Mm. So she's Ooh. swinging eight dice on offense and eight dice on defense in close attacks. Mm. Okay, so somebody comes at her from close up, and then it's very easy for her to turn it around and just... Just kill the enemy, right? Just parry and repost. Excellent. So that was that was a mission of Space Station Zero. I had an absolute blast. Again, if you guys want to pick up this game, exclamation mark SSZ in the Twitch chat uh, to get a link to it. Otherwise, it is spacestationzero.com. Station Zero game. Game.com. Uh, check out uh, a PDF copy or a soft cover uh, copy with the PDF included in the price. That's right. Um, it's super cheap, and I had a lot of fun, and I honestly want to make a squad. Uh, yeah, me too. What do you think? Yeah, you thinking that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it was quick to get the hang of, but you can see how the missions are going to change drastically how you approach it, and the strengths of one type of a squad doesn't consistently help you in every kind of situation. So, yeah. Um, you being able to much quicker take care of that because you guys were kitted for skill tests showed its, showed its value there. So that was pretty cool. Uh, we're going to do a period of Q&A with these two yeah. guys about the game. Um, so if you have any questions about Space Station Zero, drop them in either chat, Vince's YouTube chat or my Twitch chat, and we will we'll answer them. Absolutely. I'm glad you guys had fun. And just to speak for a moment about the difficulty curve, um, so this is a pretty early challenge because I didn't want to reveal anything, you know, too deep in, right? This could, this could easily be the second challenge you play because the first challenge is always the same. Every time you start a new crew into the space station, it's always the same challenge, but that doesn't mean it contains the same things. The first challenge is just a docking bay access port. There are many different access ports that leave out of the safe habitable zone that all the different aliens who are stuck here inhabit. Whenever you roll that, whenever you start that, your, your campaign, you randomly roll for which obstacles and enemies happen to inhabit that particular access port you're going through, okay? Then from there, it starts to, to branch. So this could be the, the second scenario that you, or second challenge you play through. Um, there, as I mentioned, there are several like break points um, that happen where you can't because they're sort of points of no return. And the, it, it's absolutely, like because this is a branching narrative, you may notice that there are sort of like acts to it. There is a sort of a logical breakpoints. Those happen at the point of no return. There are also challenges that uh, maybe are a little more challenging at the end of those acts. Uh, so, like you're, and the difficulty overall ramps once you hit the next act. So, okay. We have two questions here about miniatures. One is the art is sick. Any suggestions for mains that replicate its style? And then someone asked, any future plans for dedicated minis? What do you guys think? Um, probably not any future for dedicated minis. It's a, it's a pretty big kind of undertaking to go down that road. Um, but, you know, never say never, but that's kind of 
where we're at currently. There are so many different minis out there available to people, whether you're going with something 3D printing. If you don't have a 3D printer, I have one, but I don't have it set up yet, so I, I understand that. Um, you know, there's other, other stuff out there as well. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff here is Games Workshop stuff and things like from Necromunda. Like if you want to, I was thinking about this earlier, if you want to make a medical crew Vansar box mm -hmm. and then just don't put helmets on them, have them all just bare head, and then they have got that kind of bodysuit thing. If you just paint them like a white or a cream or an off-white, maybe, you know, a couple little medical bag things going on or whatever, that stuff's just really easy and you can do it really quickly. Um, but there's tons of other companies out there too that, Put stuff out. We're going to write a blog post and say, "Hey, here's you know some things that we see being like you know good you know things to take a look at and everything like that." But the whole concept behind these types of games, miniature, miniature agnostic games, is really about finally being able to use that mini that you've seen or maybe even bought it. If you're like me, you're like, "I'm going to use that someday. I don't know what for, and so I'll buy it, and then it will sit for a while, and then eventually something comes along, and that's what these types of games are for." Yeah. yeah. I know John and I will often paint a lot of one-off miniatures for videos, yeah. and so that's why this kind of game is perfect for us, because it's like, well, we can finally do something with our collection of randomly painted oh, models, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's what we did. We used, we used some of our painted sci-fi minis. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I see my, I, I'm already planning, like I said, I think I'm planning a Van Sar medical crew, and I'll probably paint that on Twitch and stuff like that, because it's, it's just easy to kind of show, like, some so, sort of simple techniques and things like that, you know, some of the new... Um, that new contrast or that new wash that's like white, you know what I mean? It's like a light gray color. I forget what the color's called. White. Well, that's the contrast one. What oh. was the new shade? Soul Blight Dinge. That's it, yeah, yeah. So you throw that on there and you kind of work off of that stuff on top of a white prime or maybe like a cream to white prime. And like there's so many different options that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to go down that road. But there's tons of companies out there, like I said, that make kind of weird stuff. Um, another one, we were talking about this before, the uh, uh, Anvil Industry is this company that makes these just cool little resin things and I've got like a unit of guys who look kind of like they, the guys in the first Alien movie when they go in and they find the big egg room and they're wearing those big kind of clunky spaceship, you know, space suits with the big, yeah, all that kind of stuff. There's so many different companies out there. Yeah. Did you have a question for your chat? I do. Uh, Vince and Adam, what is your favorite aspect, mechanic of the game you think is unique to Space Station Zero? Uh, I can answer that. You, you might have your own answer too. Uh, my answer is the fact that every stat matters. The stats are not overwhelming. They're pretty simple, but uh, the, the fact that every stat can be a challenge test, like in this particular challenge we just played, you guys used four out of your five stats to make challenge tests, right? Your life every round for the toxic gas, your reaction for the the um, uh, the fabrication, or sorry, for the, uh, the vent, the intelligence for the fabrication and combat for killing the enemies. Um, and there's also, like I said, movement challenges that just didn't happen, didn't happen to have one. And those are very carefully uh, balanced across the entire um, campaign. campaign. Yeah, like we, we did a lot of regression analysis on how many times are we hitting certain things versus their sort of innate value uh, when we were doing the development of this. But I love that everything matters. So you can have non-combat units uh, that are still like, could be the most important person in your crew, right? You can have people who just aren't there to just shoot. Medics did a lot of work uh, in yeah. this game. You know what I mean? So that that kind of stuff. Not everybody's just a shooter guy. You know, the medics are very helpful, and the scientists and all that kind of stuff. So then, therefore, the ships that come in are definitely like you know the idea is like, well, of course I bring in a warship, you know, because I want to have a bunch of soldiers to shoot all the bad guys. But yeah, but th those guys may d just be dead in a room somewhere because they couldn't ever turn off the valve for the whatever machine or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So that they kind of thing. Disarm the, the bomb in time. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is actually a super satisfying thing that you often see in like MOBAs and also new shooters where your composition for your team needs to have a support, mm -hmm. a carry, whatever. Um, but it's in a PVE environment where I get to control everything. Sure. Because the biggest complaint with those games is some person isn't playing their role or is duplicating right. another person's role. So I get to craft that. It's awesome. Uh, another question from Colorful Soldiers. Actually, you need to scroll up a bit. Um, someone said, not a question, but I really enjoy the way you have the, uh, the setup for the crew, ship, and edge for the crews. Fast, easy way to get stuck in. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Joffrey. Um, and then someone asked, did you use any other games to skim mechanics slash ideas from? Not really for this one. It's this is. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that certainly there isn't. I'm sure inspiration or homage from the you know dozens and dozens of miniature games I've played over the years. But there's not really anything I I started from here and went to. Like a lot of this is pretty much like this is what it is. 
I think that the mechanic, could you first explain to me the idea that when you're rolling your D12s, it's, and you guys might have noticed this too, it's not about how high you rolled or whatever, it's how many evens versus how many odds. Like that's a very kind of different thing, but it's really interesting and you're like, okay, well, it's just a different way to maybe like sort of, you know, skin that orange or whatever. But on the other hand, then you also get into the idea of like, yeah, but now it's only evens from six up because then all of a sudden it becomes a much different kind of number that you're trying to get so that you can have a lot more granularity within the actual challenge tests. And it's not just like, well, I got to roll higher now because it's a tougher test. It's, it, gives you, it gives you as the designer a lot more to choose from and be able to do stuff like that in the actual challenges. There was a quick one I want to hand over here. Thanks for the video. Any multiplayer rules? Yeah, I mean, they were just playing together. The two of them yeah. were a team. Um, you can play from, I mean, I think, the game probably goes a little sideways if you have more than five crews in here, um, where just you're going to be so packed on the board, I'm not sure what's actually going on right. anymore. Yeah, um, better color, color coordinate your crews if you're going to do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But like theoretically, there's no reason you couldn't play between one and five crews. Yeah. So low to five. Yeah, question in your chat. Uh, uh, got a couple. Where can we get a sweet Snarling Badger Studios t-shirt? Soon. Soon. Too. Working on the uh, the store, and we'll be doing. We'll have uh, these, and also Rain and Hell shirts, and I'll come up with some uh, Space Station Zero shirts as well. Question from Colorful Soldiers, which is Don Haney. Shout out to Don Haney. Curious about the inspiration for the game. Also, what do Vince and Adam envision the troops and aliens to look like in their minds? Are there parallels in comics or movies? Did you draw inspiration for aesthetics or stuff like that? Honestly, the aesthetics of the figures themselves. A big portion of it was um, the artist that we wanted to work with had a, a kind of a style, which is why I wanted to work with him. You know, I had come across him on on Twitter. He had done this really cool like 40k like Space Marine guy and all that kind of stuff, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I kind of searched out to figure who how, who he was. Found him on Twitter. He had just published a uh, graphic novel called Grenade. His name is his name is Will Kirkby. And uh, I got a copy of that, that graphic novel because it was just so cool. And then I went from there. And then I, uh, I was just like, I got to work with this guy. I, and, and, and when this idea came from Vince, I was like, I know the guy. I know who this is going to be because I know, based off of his other work, what this stuff is going to look like. Uh, as far as the rest of it, not just the illustrations, you know, we thought a lot about um, if you're a bunch of people who are kind of stranded in this space station, with your spaceships and you're not going anywhere, there's going to be graffiti, there's going to be things on the wall and stuff like that. And so that's why we went with the kind of really, the logo that looks like um, like a spray paint thing, like on the wall in the book and, and that kind of stuff. And it just sort of became like the headers and it became all kinds of different parts and things like that. Yeah, it's a lawless place, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I'm also noticing a little stamp here on the brick wall that happens to look very similar to your T-shirt. Yeah, that was the one, that was one of the notes, like after he initially did it, because he has this kind of little bunny sort of like a, a sticker that just people were putting all over the place. He's got it in a bunch of different spots in the, in the, um, in the actual uh, illustrations. And on the cover, I was like, can you put in a sticker that looks like our logo? And he's like, yeah, sure. So we added that in as well. Excellent. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, honestly, in my head, uh, a ton of aliens. Like the, the, the appealing thing to me about this was I wanted something that people could use anything they could imagine, right? Any alien they could imagine that they could find out there in miniatures. Because the universe is, is like really big. It's wicked big. It's like crazy wow. big. And so it's like you know, as big as the Mall of America. I was at least. <laughs> least. Whoa, bro. I know, right? Like like at least as big. Maybe maybe you know what? Maybe twice as big as that. Whoa, 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 that's impossible. I know. So it's just the idea that uh, that people could play, find an excuse to use anything, like any sci-fi stuff they wanted to use. And that the, the, that the narrative speaks to that as well, to bring them in, right, is, is just really is what appealed to me about it. It was kind of the core idea. Now, there's another core concept that led me to want to do this. I'm not going to talk about it because you have to beat the game to know what that is. Um, that's the answer to the mystery. You mind if I hit a couple of super quick ones? Absolutely. Uh, is the medikit a single-use item? No. The only thing that's ever single-use, they will say single-use on them. Uh, Asteroid TV, what soundtrack is playing in your head when playing Space Station Zero? Uh, Darude Sandstorm on repeat. Adam? Uh, the music that I found on the YouTube audio library that I used in the video, which I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but uh, 
it's uh, it's just as I was looking for music to use in the background of like the intro video and stuff, and all of a sudden I came across this thing that's got this real sort of John Carpenter sort of, I don't want to say vaporwave because it's not, but it's it's leading in that direction, but it's also kind of subtle. And I sort of like this just sort of, it's ominous as well, which I think is cool. Follow up question, is Darude Sandstorm always playing in your head, Vince? 80% of the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when, when you guys were doing podcasting, we were talking about how we need to get a better music license. So that we can play Darude Sandstorm all the time. <laughs> Just constantly. Uh, PA, PA Gamer Dad asks, is there a set number of missions for a crew to work their way through in a campaign, or is it ongoing? Any thoughts on expansions in the future? Uh, so, no, there, there's no definite plans for expansions in the future, but never say never to that stuff. Like, I, I have thoughts around all of our games and what we would do, and if, if there becomes a way we can deliver that without killing ourselves, and I, I want to do it, but that's always the challenge. Because we are planning on a, a, a new game next year that's a totally different game, just like this one's completely different from the last one. So being able to do that and also maybe make some expansions here and there is kind of, yeah. It's um, you difficult. know, on that note, I saw one a uh, while back. Uh, are there any plans to open this up license-wise uh, with an OGL type thing for people to make their own expansions for it or no? In general, so no is the short answer, but in general, we don't mind fan-made content if you, as long as you're not selling it for money or something like that. So, like, we've had fans in the in the, in the the Discord create stuff for Rain and Hell, and, you know, like, as long as they put it out there and don't charge money for it and say, like, we're not affiliated with Snarling Badger in any official way, I don't care, go nuts. Like, there was a guy who did a make stuff. for, cool. um, he just made a bunch of sculpts for Rain and Hell, like, for one of the each of the six main kind of minion, type of, like, normal kind of guys. And just put it out there, and people start reaching out. Just like, are you guys affiliated with this guy? And we're like, no. And we went and looked, and he, yeah, he's just mentioning the name of the company or not the name of the company, the name of the game and all that kind of stuff. And we just reached out and we're like, hey, this is cool and all and everything. Could you just like say that you're not affiliated with us? And he's like, oh yeah, sorry. And then he did that, and it was fine. But you know, it was just he was just making a bunch of demons. We didn't use names for the demons that were anything like copyrightable or anything. We're talking about like methods and like, you know, whatever, uh, all the different types of demons. They're nothing that's like we have copyright on in that situation. So, yeah, I got one. If you don't have one, go for it. I mean, uh, yeah, I assume I always have one, so we'll go back and forth. Cool, cool. Uh, what does the even odds do better than just a seven plus, or was it just wanting to be different? No, it's definitely not wanting to be different. It does do something better. Uh, the evens odds gives me the ability to add in then the target number as well, because that's the roll over a number, so I can actually slide the two mechanics together. Um, evens odds means so. Think about a d six. If you need an auto fail on a D6, then like in Warhammer or something, one is always a failure, right? But two doesn't auto fail on evens odds, right? I can have six success numbers. You with me so far? Okay. Now, so there's six failures and six successes. I know I only have five fingers, I'm aware. But like you can picture what's going on here. With target number, if it was just seven plus, I can't add a second number. But with target number, like the way your armor was working, I can remove these two and now say only these three succeed. Right? These remain all failures, but now I added, I snuck two other failure conditions in here as well. And so I can play with the odds in a really interesting way. Target number moves when you do that. Right. Um, without your stat changing. Correct. Um, very interesting. Um, is Space Station Zero the actual name of the station or just what the crews call it? So that's kind of interesting. Um, the, the, the trick is, is that, and this is one of the mysteries in the game, the, the crews that land here are all different species who've generally never even seen these other species that they've come across. They may come from cultures that span across big portions of space and have bumped into other species and, and have, you know, maybe adversarial relationships with these guys, but we're like friends with these guys or whatever the deal is. But they come here, they get here kind of by accident, land at Space Station Zero, um, and they see a lot of different aliens they've never come across before, predominantly all of them. The strange thing is that they can all understand each other. There's something going on, and they can all understand each other. They can all read the graffiti that's written on the wall. Like, someone went up there and sprayed in whatever language, whoever knows long, how long ago, but I can look at it and read it. And it's one of the mysteries, kind of, of the station. Yes. Colloquially, they all call it space stations, even though the aliens who are there. A um, couple more questions, because we have some people who have to make far drives to get back home that are multiple hours. Sure, sure. I don't want to keep them here to t uh, for too long. Uh, how about if the stats allow for customization based on what you see is what you get? Flight, giant size, etc. So some of the gear will certainly allow you to do that. I don't know about giant size situations. I can't think of anything we have that would do that. But there's certainly gear that will give you flight 
And the weapons are, are fairly generic intentionally, uh, like heavy kinetic weapon or sidearm or, you know, melee weapon, something like that, because I, I don't want to put people in a corner, like whatever their version is. Maybe it's a giant fist tennis racket, you know, whatever they can imagine, right? So, so, I, so that stuff's all pretty generic and easy to reskin. Um, could you list a couple of inspiring movies to play while making terrain? Oh, nice. Hmm. Event Horizon. I was just going to say, <laughs> got it, yeah. Um, got it in one. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, how about Sunshine. Jason X? Sure, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we trolling right now? No, no right? seriously, because okay. it's all spaceshipy and stuff and everything like that. There's like a lot of spots in that movie, and there's another movie that I can't think of off the top of my head now, where it's like they were trying to do the alien thing, but you're like, that's a warehouse. I can tell you guys are just like hanging a bunch of chains in a warehouse and then just like turning off all the lights and then people are dead, you know, but that's kind of the same sort of thing, yeah. Uh, your uh, Hunter from the Future. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Okay. Uh, Dune, uh, all versions, including including the David, especially, but especially David Lynch's version because that has, of course, this is the best from, version. Especially when it's ripped straight from uh, Mexican television. Now I was going to say VHS with the yeah. tracking problems on the top, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all those things. Um, design question. Uh, well, do you have a question for us, Vince? Uh, I've, 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 I've been, I've been taking over. I was looking, sorry. Um, if, if you roll two ones and two twelves, is it still considered a crit success? Yes. yes. So the, the crit trumps the the failure. Yes. Crit success trumps the trip. Crit, crit failure. That's hard to say. It is. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, here's a couple quick ones. Uh, let's see. Uh, when do 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 do. Um, is there a Discord for Space Station Zero? Yes, there is. You can find the link to it on uh, spacestationzerogame.com. There we go. Or can just, you? Yes, or just snarlingbadger.com. It's up on the top. On the top. I was going to link it in the chat. Yeah, there's a little, uh, little, oh, yeah, there it little is. icon. It didn't, it didn't used to be. Like, because we, we use um, Squarespace for our website, and if you typed in a, a Discord link, it didn't know what to do with it. And I'm like, really? And this was like literally six months ago. And I'm like, Discord's been around for a while, guys. You should, but yeah, they, they fixed that. Though, so. Oh, congrats, Miniac. You just joined the Discord. Nice. <laughs> what if you roll four ones and two twelves? Uh, then somebody else, what if you roll three ones and two twelves? What if you roll infinite ones and two twelves? Well, then you rolled two twelves, and a crit success beats a crit failure. So every time, I don't care how many ones you have. Like, it just, it's two or more is a failure, two or more is a success. Gotcha. Uh, other things. Uh, fifth Element, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. These are all good things. Uh, when developing your games, do each of you focus on specific things individually or is it all collaborative? This could be an extremely long answer, but I'll keep it simple. Uh, ideation and that kind of stuff is definitely both of us. Uh, I mean, like, incredibly back and forth collaborative process. The rules development and writing, I think, is primarily me, but then Adam... Uh, backstops me and keeps me sane and make sure that I'm not doing anything stupid. And then on the, uh, you know, like basically all the heavy lifting around art, layout, uh, art design, direction, production, production. getting printed, printed, the whole deal, all that kind of stuff. Um, is, is Adam. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and it, all and the real work. It's, the real work. it's generally yeah, like, like it's, it's Vince a lot more, more at the beginning. Yeah. And again, yeah. collaboration. We, we, we get online and, and chat with each other pretty much every Sunday in the evening. And um, so we work on that, and then after that, and, and we've gotten everything written and edited and all that kind of stuff, then at that point, I've already been working on trying to come up with what the layout's going to look like and all that kind of stuff, and then we just start dumping the stuff. I start dumping the stuff in there and then going through there, and then we eventually get an actual product that you can uh, purchase. Claire Drick, can you re-ask your question? I'm unable to look back in the chat history. Uh, let us know. We might have missed it. My apologies. Um, I don't have any more questions for that. What moment. design space do you want to explore next? We already do have our next game that'll come out next year. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And uh, I already have a pretty healthy amount written for that. But we're 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 moving forward. So you know, as always, follow the the tweeters and the uh, the, the various social media eyes. Yeah, and uh, that's that's where you'll see that stuff. Yeah, yeah like, like again, the plan, the plan is to make a game a year and um, and kind of keep releasing in this same kind of format. Um, but things, new things may come to light. You know, we may decide to uh, 
make something even else that's like a little zine or something like that. We've had some talks about that. Mm -hmm. We kicked around the idea about like just doing like a weekend game jam where like we would start on Friday night and then publish on Monday morning and just oh, to see what we shit. get and then stream some of it and stuff like that. But that's... That's a video idea, guys. It ruins a weekend, mm -hmm. though. It does. <laughs> you know, it does. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a video idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, very cool. Claire Rodrick restates the question. I don't have a ton of experience in wargaming. Would you say this is a good game as a starting point? Would you call it beginner-friendly? Yes. Like, Rain and Hell, our first game, is more beginner-friendly than this. But but this is absolutely meant to be very beginner-friendly. It is a the, the book is very focused on walking you logically and simply through what you need to do to get playing. It it has a very gentle curve in the first couple challenges, so you can like get your feet wet and learn and understand what's going on. We have a nice glossary, so we're not yep. just using a bunch of jargon right off the bat, and you're like, I don't know what that means. You know, like we explain everything. Like, you know, what do, what is a D12? You know, like all kinds of stuff like that. Things that. People who've been playing for a while would be like, oh yeah, I know what that means, but we're not gonna take that into consideration. We're gonna say, hey, you know, most likely we should explain this as if you don't know it. But we don't go as far as like, this is how you roll dice and then show you like picking them up and dropping them. So there's a couple of things you might have to come up with, but that's basically about it. Uh, how, how long was the play testing, testing process? process? About four and a half months of various development and play and then rewind and update and play again and stuff like that. And we've been working with Three people on that mostly outside yeah, of Tom us. Tom is certainly the lead developer. Yeah, lead yes, developer outside Tom, of myself. Like Tom, Tom, Tom runs all the backstop, backstop math, math on me uh, mm -hmm. and everything like that. But yeah. Um, someone asked, any, any vehicles, bikes, something like that in the game? No, no, no vehicles. Uh, I, I, it, there's little drones, as I said, but but no, no vehicles. That would be. Uh, there's no reason you couldn't or make a guy on a bike thing, except his base would be pretty pretty big. Yeah. Um, but but no, in this case, it, it is people walking. Uh, given the nature of the space station, using a vehicle is fairly impractical. Um, there are lots of places where you're needing to travel up, down, crawl through pipes and vents and stuff like Floors that. It's, that are ruined and, you know, yeah, kinds of it's hard to take a giant motorbike through that. I mean, it's cool. You just need six skills. Yeah. <laughs> To ride your motorcycle up a ladder. And a, yes. And, a monster and into a, a ventilation shaft. Yeah, yeah, Easy. Yeah. Piloting check. I mean, All twelves. I, I would argue that if you had the like the the jet shoes that allow you to fly, mm -hmm. you could take like one of those infinity hover bikes that have like fly air wheels, put it up on an angle. It's like doing a wheelie on a forty millimeter round base. The guys are riding and doing a wheelie, and that's how he flies. I, I think, think it's possible. I think you should give it a try. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so each, each game is different down to the mechanics. So each game has its own. We don't reuse mechanics, mechanics generally. Oh, I mean, like if there's something I want to use, I'll reuse it. But, yeah. but generally, they are the mechanics are an emergent property of the guiding principles and theme of that particular game, uh, all the way down to the dice rolls, the odds, everything. So uh, because I feel that, that mechanics need to be expressive of the setting and the theme and the tones that are happening, not the other way around. Yeah, the last uh, game was fast, brutal, demonic combat, and the rules were designed to accentuate that. I mean, that's really the way the game is built, but it's designed so it's not just like normal like kind of mechanics, and that's kind of the, the way that works. The idea behind the um, activation in the last game was that you would roll all these D12s, one for each unit, or each demon that you got, and then at the end, then you would be able to kind of put them in order, and then it was kind of like you're having this sort of big giant scrum with all these demons, and you can see as the leader how things are going this turn. Oh, these guys are getting stomped over here, and they're getting outpaced by these guys, so they've lost initiative, and these guys are doing better. And then next turn, it's completely different, but it's knowable from both sides of the table. You know what I mean? Once you've done that roll at the beginning of the new turn, you can look and go, they're going to go on turn 12 twice and then 11 and then nothing again till 8. And you look at yours and go, I'm going to be going. So you kind of know what's going on. In this, because there's a dark space station and there's smoke and gas and all kinds of stuff like that, it's a little bit more reactive. You don't know if you're going to activate your second guy on your thing or if it's going to go third maybe, possibly, eh, and then it's back to them again. So it's the rules matter to the story. That's the way we've always kind of done it. I like that. Let's do four more questions, and they'll be done. Impending Duff, thank you for a rate of 62. We appreciate it. I was just it. about to mention that. Go, Go Duff. Dan. Hey, Duff. All that right, goes hand-in-hand hand with the fact that I've seen a ton of hype for this the 
whole stream, people are like, this is awesome. Yes. Uh, Rikua asks, will this be shown played at a convention? Yes. Uh, like, I, I, I doubt we're going to be able to actually play it live at Nova. We're going to be there. We're going to do a QA and a in person at Nova. Uh, so we have a theater reserved for that, and we'll have copies to sell. And yeah, some. Yeah. yeah. Um, certainly, certainly when it comes around to Adepticon, I'm sure we'll do like we did last year, where we did a full-on come see, play with us demo thing. Yep. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll certainly get that reserved as well for, for Adepticon. And we'll probably try to, even for Adepticon, maybe have some like rain and hell over here, and then some other, and just, you know, eventually it'll just be like, there'll be 38 different game systems, and we'll be 75 years old. Or and I'll just be running from table to table. Like, I don't, here's what you do. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. No. Oh, no, okay. I, I don't looks it. But, I mean, combined, we're crushing that number. That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. I got to throw it back every now and then. They call me a fetus like every other sentence. <laughs> um, question for you. We've got three more to go. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's so, so many, many of these. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm just, just going to rapid fire a bunch here is what I'll do instead of doing three. Here we go. Do you fear your reach audience is growing? I mean, I hope so. It'd be nice, but I, it's hard to tell with that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any missions or scenarios work well with more vertical terrain? Yeah, I mean, like many of them, as you saw here. There's lots of them that actually speak to vertical terrain. Uh, any rules or stuff you had to leave out of the game that you regret leaving out? Uh, nope. Nope. There was stuff I cut, but it was all... The, I never regret a cut. A cut is a cut because a cut needs to be cut. Like, it's just like when you cut something from a video. You're never like, oh, I'm sad that can't be in there. You're like, no, it's a better video now because I cut this thing. Um, uh, in, in terms, terms of, of miniatures, miniatures, which miniatures do you feel come closest to the artwork in the book? Similar look, a lot of different stuff. Anything you can imagine is the answer. Like if, if you can find it out there and it's a sci-fi mini or even not, um, <laughs> I'm fine with it. A lot of people have already said that the uh, 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 cyberpunk red, red miniatures from Monster Fight Club have got a feel that kind of feels along, like you'd have to swap out alien heads and stuff like that, but there's a lot of pouches and like tactical stuff and whatever that kind of thing. And then I think paint style is gonna help a lot too. Those minis are also a uh, really good deal. Yeah, no, I like them, I've, I own a bunch of them. Is there a list type and a number of the baddies, minis you need to get through the campaign? Uh, the answer is we're gonna publish a little thing out on the site that'll kind of guide you, but the short answer to your question is six organic monstery mutiny type people is the max you'll ever need and six robot-y inorganic angry robots. And with those 12 figs, you would be able to account for every baddie in the if game. If you're playing in a solo. If you're playing solo, solo. Right. six per crew you, you want, want to participate. participate. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Um, I blew them right through them. Nice. Um, our alpha slash beta testing uh, for future products, something the public can sign up for from that wing boy. We haven't really done that. Um, we've mainly just been kind of working with the people in board. I mean, I, I don't know if it... The thing is, is that the way that we release this game is that we release it on release day and nobody even knew the title. Like, we were telling people it was sci-fi, skirmish, solo co-op, you know, survival. I don't even know if we were using the term survival necessarily at that point. But we kind of hold it close to the vest and kind of do that. So. When you get into beta, like if you announce we're making this game, it's coming out next year, it's called this, and it's all this, here's all the information, then the betas make a lot of sense because if someone's like, hey, you know this game, and they talk about it, well, you know. But uh, with us, we're a little bit more kind of insular, I guess. Yeah, the, the answer, answer is we're going to bring uh, John and, and Scott, Scott and Sam and, and, and Adam, Adam, and I'm going to I'm gonna bully all of them into coming to my house. Uh, again, for another hangout sometime between now and, like, let's say Q1 of next year, uh, wherein we do a, uh, a little hangout paint jam and we play a role-playing game because I'm going to force uh, more role-playing games down, down, uh, down uh, Uncle Adam's throat, and we'll test this. It's going to be a weekend party. It's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. And the last question from Davros the Brute. Are characters like engineers able to create stationary turrets or potentially hack a turret in a scenario? Uh, no, yes. Yes, they can't create turrets, but they can't hack them. All the way around. They can't hack turrets, they can't create them. So yeah, they, you, you can't make a turret just lay there, but, but there, there are, are turrets, turrets that can be hacked, or emplacements, placements or whatever, uh, in some of the scenarios that you can then use to attack the attackers. Absolutely. And it's not just engineers. Uh, anybody could they can generally attempt it, but engineers are going to be like better at, better at it. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you guys, guys for hanging out, showing, showing us the game. game. Thank you for answering all those questions. Thanks for having us. One last time to show where you find the game. What does it cost? Um, Space Station Zero Game.com, the PDF. 
is 124 pages. It's $13 American. And the print co copy is $18 American plus shipping. Plus you also get the PDF for free then. So you could buy it, they'll produce it and ship it to you in about a week or two. And you get the PDF right now so you can start taking a look at it. Join the Discord. You can also find that on the same spot, spacestationzero.com. Space Station Zero game. Sorry. I always do that too. Dang it. <laughs> Put in a link directly to the uh, purchase page, snarlingbadger.com slash space station zero. Whole bunch of them right there in the chat. Mm -hmm. A lot of Excellent. spam there. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I'm a spam lord. And if you guys like what you're seeing uh, here, we normally do streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays is painting stream. Thursday is the gaming stream. Uh, on Tuesdays, it is 1 to 4 p.m. CST. And on Thursdays, it's 7 to 10 p.m. CST. So drop us a follow so you know when we're going live or follow our calendar so you get notifications about those things when they happen. But for now, I think we're ready to say goodbye to the stream. Bye. Goodbye, stream. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you're watching on my channel, okay, thank you. Also, sub, like, all of that stuff. And also, go follow and sub to Miniac over on Twitch.